Oh my gosh, there we go. Good morning. Welcome back to the live stream. My name is Jeff Fritz, it, and this is Fritz and Friends, and I've actually got friends with me in person today, right? Yeah, yeah look at that. Um, today is March 6th, 2018. I'm, I'm live at Channel 9 Studios. We're in, we're in a big white room here today. Um, but big thanks to Tim Hewer for, for letting us kind of invade and take over the studio for, for a little bit here today. Um, I'm going with my Green Eagles hat today because we're the champions, so I gotta, I gotta show that. And it's also a little trick that I've, I've figured out. Oh, look at this, I got the Channel 9 guy sneaking into the camera. Look at this. <laughs> That's how you can tell this is live, ladies and gentlemen. Um, you know, so a trick that I figured out when I go to conferences and things, when I wear my, my Eagles green stuff, people can spot me from various locations. So I'll wear my Eagles green shirts, I'll wear my green hat, and folks are able to find me. So we're here for MVP Summit this week. I've got a number of, of friends in town. Um, of course, all the MVPs in town, and I, I might have something we want to talk about with the MVPs. Uh, mentioned about them a little bit later in today's stream. But of course, I want to introduce my first guest, Go ahead, Max, why don't you introduce yourself? <clears throat> so, hi guys, my name is Maxime, uh, Maxime Rouillet, which is pretty much the only French word he's going to hear on this stream today. Um, I'm a cloud developer advocate from, uh, from Microsoft, so basically I'm working off to get the cloud and our uh, and .NET and everything else in a, in a better state than they were, especially on the docs side. Oh yeah. So that's always something we want to improve. We're never done improving, right? Oh my gosh. Docs? In my mind, docs are those things that will make or break a product because, exactly. let's face it, if folks don't know how yeah. to use the product, right, it kind of becomes an issue. So with great docs comes great product, or the other way around. Yeah. Great products have great docs. Yes. But I always, I always have that problem with my stereo, where, you, right, you unpack the stereo at home and it's like, I've got all these wires, where do I connect them? But I think that most people will understand that when you get on, uh, if you start to like, oh, I, I want you to try this project, you just download it and you figure it out yourself. Mm -hmm. That's always fun. But at some point, you know, you're going to have like that problem. So before you actually take that product and bring it in the enterprise, mm -hmm. you're going to start looking at the docs and see how good it is because just in case that thing stops working. So you're going to be looking at the docs and be like, no way I'm using that. Like there's this is like a, an abandoned project just from the docs. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. we want to make sure that our docs does not look like an abandoned project, right? We want to make sure that everything we do is like it's actively being worked on and we're here to fix all the bugs ever because, well, there's no bugs in our products ever, right? We don't, <laughs> no, we don't code we bugs. Don't, we don't write bugs. We don't pay people to code bugs. You know what? We've got a bunch of, a bunch of friends in the chat room. I want to have a quick shout out to some of these folks. We have uh, Dual Jones. Good morning. Organic IT. Hello. Welcome. And that's one of our good friends there in, in California. There's Isaac and Fanny Reinders. Uh, Standby Reloading. Hey there. Oh, and um, of course, there's Suze. Uh, no Op Cat. Yeah, No Op Cat. Oh, my gosh. She's getting... She's She's got our... Um, is she on Twitch? Our remote on Twitch there. Let me make sure we unblock Suze so she can post a couple things there. Very cool. Thanks for joining us, Suze. Um, if you don't, if you don't check out No Opcat stream, make sure you check that out. She's got some great stuff that she does every Sunday morning mm. um, around uh, JavaScript development, Arduino development, building building hardware drivers. She's the IoT master. Oh my gosh. That's for crazy. me, it's my source of inspiration for anything IoT. Crazy cool stuff. And there's her remote there in the stream. Very cool. Um, let's awesome. see. So it doesn't contribute to docs. My question is why? Let's figure out what is stop. Oh, if you don't contribute to docs, Isaac says, what's, what's stopping you from contributing? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, so if you guys want to answer that, because I contribute to docs. <laughs> <laughs> I, I know some folks get intimidated yeah. when they look at documentation, not just documentation, but an open source project, yeah. and they they don't know, you know, how quickly they can jump in and get involved with something. Yeah, and so, Docs is actually the uh, easiest one to get involved with because you don't need to build it. Sure, right? It's 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 literally yeah. a document there in some markdown, markdown format. Yeah, yeah. some markdown files. Um, Standby reloading asks: Are you guys using DocFX for the .NET Core Docs? Are you using docfx? We're we're using. Sure oh. oh, we got Brady Gaster here. He's yeah. just off camera. Go ahead. Hey everybody, um, Dan Delamarski, uh, my uh, former teammate in the docs team, and Dan would probably be good people to ask about this. 
we were using doc effects for the .NET reference in the beginning, but we ended up collaborating with the folks from Xamarin and now we're using some of their interesting uh, XML formats. Uh, we got a lot more uh, stuff we could do with that than we were uh, getting on doc effects at the time, so we kind of changed the gears there. Um, but, uh, sorry, I think that's ECMA XML. I can't remember the actual XML flavor, but uh, we, we work closely with Miguel and company on that one. So. There you go. Yeah. Um, organic IT, do you need to sign a contributor license agreement to contribute to this? <coughs> you do. And that's only because we want to make sure that your employer or somebody else that you're engaged with doesn't have a right or a, or a claim over our documentation or over right, that public project. We don't want you know somebody to come through and, and file a lawsuit and say, ha ha, I own this because I have the... Uh, or I paid this employee to, yes. but during the time they rode the dogs because for some reason you, you spend the whole day riding dogs for us during your daytime job. So don't do that, by the way. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, no, so this is just normal social contribution. Uh, yep. Legalese. Just normal lawyers protecting protecting us and protecting your project yes. from, from somebody saying, hey, I, I have ownership over this. All right. Mm. We need to get into some code. Yes. I, we've talked a little bit. We, you know, uh, let, let me change scenes here and let's go over. So here's my GitHub. Thank you so much, everybody that's tuning in here this morning. We really appreciate you joining us. Um, I've got a number of projects that, of course, we've been working on. Um, and the one that, that we're focusing on right now is this one over here, Fritz Stream Tools. And for those of you that haven't seen us talk about this, just to recap, this is a simple ASP.NET Core project that generates some of the widgets you see on screen here. So up at the top, this architecture workshop follower goal, this is actually an ASP.NET Core user interface, right? It's just generating a bar inside of a, a web page and using OBS, the open broadcaster software, I embed that browser plugin here, that browser output here on the screen. Same thing with the followers count that you see up here in the top right corner, as well as the viewers count that you see in the very top right there in white. Those are all being generated from ASP.NET Core and they're being updated live from the various services using SignalR. So- it's awesome. Thank you. Um, <laughs> so you're building your own tools for that. And uh, I looked at this kind of like how folks who do 3D printing work, right? Mm -hmm. the, the first thing that folks who have 3D printers build, th they build things to make their 3D printer better. <laughs> right? They, they build a platform, right. they build different mounts and rigs and things, and uh, fantastic, you know, it's an amazing, uh, awesome. an amazing community there. So to learn a little bit more about how to use OBS, how to use some of the things um, to make streaming better, it was like, all right, you know, there are folks who do have these features out there on publicly accessed websites that, you know, do some nice things with widgets. And you'll even see our, our alert widget that ha that'll come up here at the bottom of the screen. I haven't replaced it yet, but if somebody clicks follow, you'll see, uh, you'll see our friend Steve Ballmer pop up and welcome them. Um, but that, you know, that isn't something that I've built yet, but all these other things, we're building and learning a little bit more about ASP.NET Core okay. as we're going along. Now, you were saying something about we could use functions to kind of enhance what we're doing here with some of this. Um, so, does anybody in the stream don't know what function is? I'll assume that nobody knows, or so, at least well, the delay will be too long anyway. Yeah, so, so uh, right, so yeah. Azure Functions, right, we're talking about, right, that's that's that serverless. Yeah, yeah serverless. So, the thing is, uh, when, when everybody talks about serverless, if, at least the first time you, you encountered the word serverless, mm -hmm. what happened, uh, that's the, that's Balmer, there you go. Thank you oh, very man. much for the follow. Uh, <laughs> is that Mando Aid? You know, thank you for joining us. So, uh, serverless. <laughs> Sorry, Balmer interrupted me. It's like really disturbing. <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> you know what? We uh, we like to make fun of Steve's. Uh, right. So the Clippers. You know, he's he's. Yeah. <laughs> So basically, when everyone talks about serverless, the first time they encounter the word serverless, and we tell them that it's also on the server, the first thing they do is like, wait, there's a server? Yeah. <laughs> so sure. Yeah, this is like, okay, no, this is not what we meant. Uh, by serverless, we mean you don't have to manage those servers. So, all right, so let, let's break that down, right? Yeah. So, right, five, 10 years ago, we talked about, you know, gosh, even 15 mm. years ago when I was doing 
working for a dot com. You had your own metal. You owned, yes. you owned your own hardware. Yes. It was in a data center somewhere. And then we went to, hey, Fanny Rinders, thank you for the follow. We, then we went from we went from having uh, uh, our owning our own servers to virtual machines. So you still ran and managed your own yes. operating system, yes. but it was in a slice of whatever that host yes. machine was. And then we had because people were isolating those machines with uh, you know with permissions and stuff like that. But everyone was running in the same physical machine, and people were always afraid of crossing streams. Oh my gosh, at yes. some point, if you write a command file, somebody reads of, reads mm -hmm. out of it. Mm -hmm. If you're building multi multi-tenant application, this was like way dangerous. So so then we said, all right, let's isolate a little yes. further, and then we have containers, yes. which really are just a slice of an operating system that you don't have to manage. Mm -hmm. It's being configured with code, and that container, we can load an application into, and we can run. And in fact, I mentioned about the widgets. I have the widgets running in a container on my machine here. Yeah. So functions go even further. I don't need to think about my operating system. I don't need to think about setting up an application. I don't even need, need to think about compiling an application, I can just write a little snippet of code yes. and have it execute somewhere. Right. And I don't care so, where it executes, it's just run this little piece of code. We went from from full-fledged of we want to run the code on the hardware to let's put those in virtual machines so that it's better separated to uh, now let's run it in containers because uh, I want to make sure that I can recreate production environments locally on my dev machine mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. just, I have just this one piece of code I want to run. Yeah. Okay. And that's what I want to run. And one of the big advantage of the serverless is that you're not managing servers. So okay. with containers, you would have to say, well, oh wait, I, I need five or six or seven instances, or I, I will need to update my base images because at some point it's going to go out of date. Well, I need to update the frameworks, and you okay. have to manage all of that. So, so I might have to bring in Kubernetes to do that orchestration. Yes, exactly. So as, as scale happens, as I get a lot of folks visiting, I need to yes. scale that and, and replicate and all those things, deploy new versions. Yes. When, I get, when I start talking about serverless, Yes. I've only got that snippet of code. Run it on as many as you need to exactly. to complete that execution. So the way the serverless works is that we, when you receive the first request, uh, I, I, and I say we, I mean all the global cloud providers will do the same thing, is we will, prefer, we will provision machines uh, in the back okay. with, with your code and you're going to be able to handle instances. We're not going to be provi provisioning one instance. We're going to be provisioning Lots. tens tens yeah. of, uh, of, of instances that will be ready to handle and run your code. Very so, cool. So, so since we have uh, no op cat here, um, I use IoT Hub for, uh, because she got me into IoT, man. It's like a drug, it's insane. Okay, hang on. What is IoT Hub? Uh, IoT Hub is a service for uh, messaging for IoT devices. So. And, and it runs on Azure? Yeah, it runs on Azure, but okay. uh, the thing is, is uh, let's not get into too much detail about what it is, but basically it allows you to send messages to the cloud and from any IoT devices. So okay. I have this Raspberry Pi at home, just sending... Um, I know that guy. Brady Gaster is now following uh, us. Thank yeah, you, he's Brady. Me he's, like, sound. he's like right there. Right here. <laughs> <laughs> so... So I have this Raspberry Pi just sending messages. Okay. And the thing is that when you have multiple IoT devices like that, you want to make sure that you can scale. Because if so, you have one IoT device, you don't need to scale. But once you start having thousands of those devices, so, you need a way to handle those requests. Okay, so we'll, we'll, we'll look at how we're going to do something with yes. this in just a second in our code. But the real-world example of what you're describing of scaling and being able to handle messages from all those devices would be something like I have, I have a Philips Hue at home. Yeah. That, right, I have a couple of lights, light bulbs that I've plugged in around my living room, yes. and I'm able, I'm able to use my, my phone, I'm able to use my, my voice-activated assistant mm -hmm. that looks like a hockey puck, yes. Alexa, and um, tell her to turn on the lights and things around, around my house. Each one of those light bulbs is an IoT device. Yes. It, has, it has a little Wi-Fi yes. transmitter in it, and it's connecting out over the web and it's going out to a server somewhere and when I issue the command, whether it's from my phone yes. or it's from the, from my hockey puck device and, and to turn on those lights, right, that thing you need is sending a, you need a message. To communicate. Yeah, it's sending a message out to that serverless instance yes. out there, right, it, something like IoT Hub and it's saying, oh, I need to address these, these devices yes. and then sending that turn on the lights command to my lamps in my home. 
exactly. all connected. So Fantastic. The IoT Hub can do that, and but this is not the uh, it's not a sales pitch. So basically, it's just a way to send, exchange messages, right? And the problem with that is that as your amount of, of devices that you connect on the web increases, you will need in the in the back end to provision more services. So before you would like sure. oh at, let's add VMs, right? Sure. This is this is the good problem. I've sold hundreds of thousands yes. of light bulbs. I need to I, I need to provision more. Uh, more resources. Exactly. At the most, thank you for following us and joining us. And yes, this is live. Okay. Um, by the way, by the way, if you're interested in partying on Azure IoT Hub, there's, we have this awesome new thing called the yeah, MX Dev Chip. There you go. Yeah. Or the MX Chip. It's okay. super cheap. It sends like thousands of. Uh, you can send thousands of, thousands of events with this. Yeah. And so. Okay, so let, let's talk about some, some real code. Let's yeah. actually get in. You know, we've described kind of the problem here. We've gone through, yeah. we've described a little bit about this. And if we go back to the functions that we're here to talk about, right? Yes. The functions so, will allow you to just don't care about let's provision more VMs. Good. Because okay. it will just scale. As, sure. you, as more requests comes in, we take care of not uh, bothering you and saying how many instances do you want you want like oh small instances big instances don't care okay I just want to run my code and as more requests are coming in it scales it handle it okay so don't so care because of course I, I need to have millions and millions of instances mm -hmm. um, and being able to handle all kinds of messages yes. um, the Janescu was saying you can see my chat in the stream yes you can it's right there we just above us. We see you, Janiscu. So, um, okay. So, so because you, yeah, be, because we need to, um, we need to be able to scale and support all these things. Now, of course, right? I, I've only got fifty people connecting right now. 40, 43, 44. Oh, yes. come on, where'd you go? Forty-four. Anyways, um, <laughs> we right. The idea that I, I was I was talking to you about is it'd be really nice. If if I could you know capture statistics or something yes. from the stream and and put it out there somewhere with a function easily. Yes. Now the the trick I kind of run into here is the Twitch library is a little bit tricky to to build some of those things around. But how do we get started building a function and then we'll look at you know maybe on a later time we'll look at dialing in uh, uh, actually wiring up to the Twitch library. If I wanted to yes. start just with a simple function. That logs data into into let's say Cosmos DB, so I can yes. so I can mine it, put it into a Power BI, and then um, oh look at that, Brady, what are you doing? Posted a link. Well, right, and you got you got knocked back. Hard. I got lagged. You got. It was a picture of Doctor Evil going millions. Yeah, we're not going to let you do that. <laughs> uh, give me one second. Let's add him in here. You, know, you almost have to be like very ADD to do this because there are so many things going on at once. There we go. There's Brady. Go ahead, try that post again. So, um, man, that's a huge URL. Okay. Um, so, it, right, one of the things that I want to do here yes. to make sure that the folks who are on stream, folks who are watching, right, I want to I want to capture a little bit of information about how well we're doing, so I can generate some cool graphs. Be able to see, you know, here's here's how many folks are participating, and and know that we're going in the right direction. We're we're presenting good content that folks are interested in. Um, so I want to get that stuff into a, a database somewhere that I can use Power BI with, and then mine that, create some cool dashboards. So I when I have some marketing folks, Brady, that you know want to say, hey, you know, we want to present some content on stream. You know, what kind of audience are we looking at? I want to be able to show that information. So let's start with how do I get in and I want to build some functions here on my machine. Now, I have Visual Studio 2017 installed and running over here, and I'm already live sharing. You can see here there's Max connected, yes. and Brady's connected in as well. Um, we'll get over. Brady's got some great stuff he wants to show us about SignalR here. We'll look at that in a little bit. But I've already got a couple projects here. I've got my test project and I've got my stream tools project. Yes. Do I need to create another project to start working with functions? Uh, yes, you do. Okay. Uh, because uh, there's many ways to create functions. The easiest way uh, for for people just to play with will be through the portal, through okay. the Azure portal. The thing is, uh, this is 
this is more to experiment with, in my opinion, because sure. the Visual Studio or the VS Code way to do it will allow you to compile your DLL. So you don't okay. actually need to compile code once, you're, once you, if you ship the DLL. But if you go on the portal and you use .NET, we will use something called a CSX, you know, the okay. C Sharp script file from yes. way back then. So that was uh, CSX, C Sharp scripting. That yeah. was uh, something that our friends Gr uh, Glenn Block. Yes. And um, I'm forgetting the other folks on that team. People are very, uh, love that project very much. But yeah, it was a great, it's, it's a great project. Then they're continuing to innovate on it. Yes. Um, okay. So I'm here inside my new project window here, and I've got a couple different options. Yes. Azure Data Lake, Azure Stream Analytics. I don't think those are it. Is it up here in C Sharp? In cloud. Cloud. Azure Functions. Yes. Cool. Okay, so I don't want it. Um, I'm adding new project. Why is it putting it here? I want to put it under my Stream Tools folder. And um, let's just call this, can I just call this like Stream Functions? Yeah, but if, you, if you're talking about analytics, maybe that's something you want to you, you want to capture, right? Stream analytics. Yeah, why not? Okay. It's not, it's not because something. at some point we're going to publish our stream tools project. You know, as as this evolves, we'll publish it. We'll make it multi-tenant, so any streamer can connect to and use it, and uh, we'll sell access to this and we'll profit. <laughs> okay. Um, so all right. Uh, so now I'm, I'm asked about. Triggers. What's a trigger? Uh, trigger is um, conditions on which the functions will activate. So oh, okay. So w coming back to my Philips Hue example, when when I'm on my phone and I say turn on the lights, yes. it would send some sort of an HTTP call that says, you know, that does a get or a post and yes. it says turn on the lights. So it will. This one, for for this, for example, this one is going to be HTTP trigger. So this one will answer to HTTP requests. So you, you okay. will have a URL just like any normal web app where you can either get, post, delete, whatever verb you want to use, okay. and it will answer. But if you want to do more something like maintenance, you okay. can use a timer trigger. So now oh. things are going to run on a schedule. So so if there's maintenance, if I want to if I want to do... Clean right, up your data or... Re-index the database yes. every however long, I can create a timer that says on this schedule. Yes. Got it. Okay. And then what's a queue trigger? Uh, since we offer different messaging scenarios on Azure, uh, we also allow you to execute the function based on the messages. So if you receive a new, uh, a new message, if somebody queues a new message, you want to be able to de uh, dequeue, right? Yep. I'm French, sorry guys. Uh, <laughs> you have to dequeue the message. So okay. what, what happens if there, there's way too many messages for one instance, like on your server, to handle? Well, functions don't care. So okay. you're gonna be able to handle that Easily, so, because as the message come in, it's going to be multiplexed. Okay, right? so so an HTTP trigger is it's synchronous, right? I do a get, I do a post yes, to this is. website, to this endpoint on the web, and it fires and does something and returns a response within message. the same time frame. Yes. So a queue, I can get that disconnected interaction. I yes. Can, I can put a message in the queue that says, "Hey, this thing happened." Go do something it. about it whenever you get to it. Yes. And my functions will process the queue yes. because it sees there's entries yes. there. And for each entry. But there's no feedback to the user that just sent exactly. a message. Yes. Because you don't really care about the answer. Somebody else in the system will care. Okay. So, so queue is kind of that fire and yeah. forget. Yes. Fantastic. Okay. But, so if but you don't forget about the result. You don't no. forget about the result. You want, you, you want to keep the result. <laughs> right. But as far as my yeah. interaction yes. with putting the message yes. into the queue. Exactly. Okay. I got it. All right. Um, a couple questions. Stream tools of multi-tenants. Yeah, kind of. That's what we're, a little bit of what we're looking at, Janescu. Um, the stream tools have a bot that what also have touch to functions. Uh, well, stream tools. So uh, to be clear, um, what Janescu is referring to is... Um, streamlabs.com is what I use for some of the things that I drop in the stream here. And what I want to show you is they do have their own API. They do have ways to do things. It's a free service. It's a nice service. Nothing wrong with Streamlabs at all. If you do streaming, this is a great service that you can use. Um, and they've got all these different features. And they're terrific. I encourage you to check them out and use them if that's something that interests you. I'm trying to learn about these things, and I'm trying to learn about them in a way that you can relate to, and it's easy for folks to pick up and see. They, they do have a great API over here, um, but you know it's not clear to me if they're using functions or some of these other features. 
but I want to learn a little bit about functions. So we're going to take a look at building a quick function here. So if I wanted to build something off of an HTTP trigger, so right when right when we saw that, right some of our friends, uh, is it over there? No, over on that side, right just to the right of Max there. Uh, when they when somebody followed us, it'd be great if I could fire off a uh, notice, right? Fire off an HTTP GET to a function endpoint that says, "Okay, here's who followed us at this time." Yes. And then I'm able to log that somewhere in the database. So let, let's start there. So, so I've got an HTTP trigger. Um, I've got storage accounts that I can use here. But we're not going to use one. Yeah, let's not use one. We can start yet. with nothing yet. Okay. So access rights. All right. Well, this is kind of important. I don't want anybody to be able to just hit exactly. my function. So there's the two access rights that are, for me, very important is either function, which is going to be only available to... Uh, with, from within your uh, your own subscriptions, which okay. is only going to be able without without using the uh, the funky stuff. Mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. You're only going to be able to access it from within the same functions and same okay. same account. Okay. However, if you want to be able to share that URL with someone else, there's a yes. way to get a special code uh, that it will be available in the portal for so that you can take that URL okay. and put it in an, in another app. They will be able to invoke it. So so a token that I could yes. put at the end of it. Fantastic. That sounds like a good way to go. Okay. Which one would I use for that? You would use function. Because okay. if you do anonymous, well, everyone in the stream will be able to execute functions. That would be fun. But That would be fun, and it will be no. massively scaling. I don't <laughs> need to do that. I, I, the stream oh. does have a budget. Okay. Uh, uh, by the way, uh, 44 came back and brought a few, fr a few friends. 44? Uh, 44 viewers when you left. Oh, fantastic. Oh my God, I got a couple more viewers. Look at that. I wasn't watching my viewer count up there. Okay. Um, and my apologies. I'm sucking down coffee like a, I don't know what. I am still adjusting to West Coast time zone. I'm Eastern. I'm, mm. We're both Eastern time, actually, right? Yep. Philadelphia, and you're in, you're in Quebec somewhere. Yes, Montreal. There you go. Oh, my gosh. Land of poutine. Uh, love the Habs. All right. <laughs> um, seriously, Patrick Waugh was my favorite player as a kid. Uh, so, so was he. Okay. Um, <laughs> all right, so I'm going to click OK here, and we can start creating just a first function here. Very simple, just to get us started and kind of show this. Um, in the chat room, Nawapcat, there Suze says, Ooh, a follow webhook. I think that's a great idea, Suze. Let's come back to that. It, and it's not like I know somebody who has some cool IoT toys that could hook up and light up and do things with yes. that. Just so, saying. I'm just yeah. saying. So as you get new followers, you can actually get like maybe lights in the back and like Absolutely. new follower flashing and stuff like that. Uh, you know, you don't know, up cat. You're actually gonna spend a lot of money because of me. I'm sorry. <laughs> no. Mm. Um, <laughs> right. uh, and is that Benef Benefice? Good morning. Great to see you here today. Okay, so I'm here inside of my stream analytics project, and I've got uh, this looks and feels to me like a normal .NET project at this point. Yes. Um, so it's it, I've got a method here called run. Okay, that, so that feels kind of like a like a command pattern where I've just got one method that's yes. static, and it's just execute or run. <laughs> so, um, uh, Julian McFly, thank you for joining us. Uh, look forward to seeing you in the chat. So this this one method here, this is my function. Yes. Okay. This is the piece of code that will be sent to uh, somewhere in the cloud. To the cloud. We don't care where in the cloud. We don't care and where in the cloud. Execute. It will execute. Okay. And even the name run does not need to be run. It can be whatever you want. You can change it. It's not a problem. Okay. So so from in here, if I I, I have a log information C sharp HTTP trigger. Yes. Okay. Big deal. Yeah, whatever. Uh, request query name. So this is an, the HTTP request that I'm yes. receiving. Yes. And I see triggers. I'm, it's authorization level function. So that's where you were saying it's a mm -hmm. function. And on get and post, if I'm posting information about a new follower, I, I think I want to get rid of the get access. And I would agree. So what do I have here? Oh, okay. So exactly. I have a collection of methods. So let's just clear out get, I guess. Yes. I can specify a route. I'm going to leave that empty. No okay. Um, and then going across, I have trace writer yeah. log. Okay, so my log. So line 19 is basically about reading the query string. Okay. So Which, I don't want to read. Oh, oh, okay. So this is unlike when I'm in ASP.NET, when I have request query string, I just have query here. Yeah. Okay. So let's just take a look at. Oh, well, there's query string. 
But query, this will go against any value collection. I, I, think, I think if you go down to query string, I think it's the string, right? So if I look at that, that one, it's a query string object, okay. which... By the way, it's not because uh, we work for Microsoft that we know the API by heart. <laughs> of course we know it by heart. <laughs> it's right there. Okay. okay. Um, <laughs> it's called IntelliSense. <laughs> IntelliSense does not rot the brain. Nope. No, it doesn't. It's amazing. It enables creativity. <laughs> Brady's, Brady, Brady's looking into the ASMR stream here. Why does, uh, why does Steve keep coming back? Am I missing because something? Because that was... Uh, JF uh, versus Lewis. Welcome. Thanks for joining us. Oh, each time there's a join? Yeah, each time that somebody follows us, we hear our friend Steve jump, chime in. Okay. You'll see when, when we get awesome. you on here. Okay. Hang on. I'm new here. <laughs> He's new. Um, all right, so if I want to request a query, well, at this point, I mean, I could grab who the, the name of the person Yes. Um, but what if I want to pass a little bit more, a little bit richer set of information, not just um, so like you're... which stream service they're coming from, and because I, I connect to both Mixer and Twitch. Yes. And if I also wanted to capture, so you um, you want to build a model? That's the first thing you want to be like. That's a great idea. You don't actually need to I'm have a like simple... a model a model project. You should just have a, a class okay. right beside your functions, or even an internal class, up to you, whatever your style is. Uh, and have something that will define what you're going to capture as information. Okay. I think that's would so be nice. I can. Is it a static class I need to create? No, it can just be a standard class. It's a DTO. Fantastic. So let's call this a new follower. Yes. And I want to define a new follower as somebody who has Prop time. property, a string, uh, and this will be their handle. Yes. Because nobody goes by their own name here. And I'm looking particularly at some of our folks here, like at the most. I don't think your parents gave you that name. And um, um, fossil, Mr. the most fossil, right? Fossils, <laughs> yes. I, I don't, I don't think fossils is, is your first name. And um, and, and Mr. Dynamite, <laughs> I'm not sure Dynamite's your last name. All right, what, so what I'm going to add a certificate for that. <laughs> yeah, the birth certificate on on Dynamite, right there. You're a TSA violation. Just. <laughs> Here's my passport, and it says dynamite on it. No. All right. Um, some people don't need anonymity. Thank you, Isaac. Uh, I, I don't need anonymity. That's why my handle is C-Sharp Fritz. I was, oh, um, I was talking to our friend Mads Torgerson yesterday. Mads Torgerson is the program manager in charge of C-Sharp. Mm -hmm. He wants to join us on stream coming up soon. So I'm going to get him in the mix here. Awesome. That'll be really cool. It was my birthday yesterday. Fun, funny you mentioned my, my birth certificate. Happy birthday, Federico. That's great. Um, oh, look. And see, Brendan, his real to, name um, is... My, I check my identity. All right. <laughs> I'm going to call this just service here because it, it, I don't want to... Nah, I'll make it stream service. Sure. Okay. So now I've got this simple class for a new follower. Yes. And you know what? I don't like it in the same file here. So I'm going to control period, move it to a different file. There Ooh, it goes. Done. All right. So... And so, obviously, you don't want to have, since you're doing a post, most of the content you don't want it in the URL. You want right. it in the body. Yes, I want it in the body. So I would uh, fall back on the IntelliSense and do a request dot and see how we can actually deserialize that. So let's see the API that will allow us to retrieve. Uh, okay, so I can, I can read form async. Yes. Now, will that, will that model bind back to my new follower object? So, let me see. So I'm using, uh, I mentioned I'm using live share that you can see where Max is following yes. along here on his machine right here. Yes, this is like right here. You, know, you don't need to be across the country in different continents to use live share. You can even be right next to each other. And here's the funny part. He's using Visual Studio mm -hmm. and I'm using VS Code. That's pretty cool. And I'm using VS Code on a Mac and I can see what you're doing. And yeah, Brady's <laughs> following along on VS Code on a Mac. Uh, Brendan, thank you for the cheer. Oh my gosh. Awesome. That's our first cheer. And so that puts Brendan at the top of the of the cheer uh, cheer list here. Uh, I don't know what they call it on Twitch. And Daenerin, thank you for the follow. I appreciate that. Um, I, don't, I don't have the Intel sensor that for me. Um, it'll pop up. There it is. It was there. Was it? Yeah. Control uh, uh, I don't know. I, I might not have the uh, C-sharp tools installed on mine. Or I don't know. Okay. It, it, shows on, it shows on yours, that's for sure. 
So anyway, I'll, I'll let you type. I'll just okay. Like so I'm going to do read form async. Yes, I think that that, that would work. Okay. Um, a cancellation token uh, mm. reads the request body if it was a form, so I get a collection, a form collection coming back. I'm not sure I want to do that. Uh, I think there is a generic implementation of that. Do we have a generic? So if I have read form, and it, it returns a task of type I form collection. So I'm, if I can run this asynchronously, I get my form collection back, and then I can do something with that form collection. I mean, I could load it into into my model at that point. Um, hmm. I'm not sure if that's really where I want to go with this, because that feels like I'm just I have a model that are just for the sake of having a model. Um, so. <clears throat> Let's do request that content. That's what I was missing. Do we have so to have a model? Do, do we have to have a model? Can you just pass I, the I, thing? I think it's supposed to be there. Um, so if I have request, I have content type, content length. Change HTTP request for HTTP request message. For HTTP request. Oh, mm, yeah, so right over there. You want me to receive in HTTP request message? Yes. But that, uh, that, that is part of our dog. So if it's not up to date, I will so have I'll to update it. So I'll change it to HTTP. Okay. So now you should be able to do request dot content. So if I say message dot content, okay. Dot. Okay, now here's where I can. So you can, can do bind a little bit. Read as async. Read. Uh, is uh, yeah. Read as async. Read as async. Okay, yeah, and, and, and now you can type. deserialize your model, your model. Fantastic. So I can deserialize directly into a new follower yes. object. No. And of course, it's not going to be a string name, right? Right. And it's async, so I need to uh, I need to either await this, right, or yes. do a do a get awaiter result. Yes. All right. So let's do that. Let's do let's do a get awaiter. And then, uh, da, 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 what is it? I, I normally just do that await. Does that, does that work? Well, I, I, this is not a, a synchronous, an, an asynchronous method. Okay. Right? So, oh, I, um, right, so if I do. Can, um, can, you, can you not just do, uh, instead of get a waiter, you just do dot wait? Well, that's not, right? We really don't want to do that one. <laughs> right? But I. There's a way to do that result. No, I don't I do no, that. No, you can't do that either because it might not be there when when you're ready to go. I think I want to do something like a continue with because then I can specify an action. Here's what I want you to do so with this. Here's another. Here's the funny part. The the actual functions can also be declared as, as async. It's not well, a problem. Well then let's just do that and make life easier. Yeah. And not have to worry about async task of i action result and that. Right. And can you, now you can uh, await. Uh, control dot that so I get my system threading. All right. So yeah. then I can just remove all that, that and go to await and wonder why the async API doesn't work or what okay. part of the async API you should use. Or So I have that now. Right down here, this code on 26 through 20, 28 was doing that uh, a deserialization from yeah. JSON. Which we don't, we're not interested in right now. Can you okay. just drop it off? So I'm going to get rid of that. So if name does not equal null, um, so if I actually get something in this original. Let me just fix your code, by the way. Uh-oh, what did I do? Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, could it not just be task I action result like in ASP.NET? Yes. And Cecil, oh, Cecil's out there on Mixer. Good morning, Cecil. Async await works and functions. Yeah, we got that one. Nice cheer. Tim, Tim cheered also. Thank you for the cheers, folks. Just a, a quick reminder. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm I'm not trying to make money off of this. I'm not trying to encourage folks, you know, say you must subscribe here. But I, I really appreciate you subscribing. I really appreciate the cheers. <clears throat> um, I will match your cheers. I will match your subscription. And uh, I'm going to take that combination, um, and my employer will actually match as well. And we're going to make a donation to Girl Develop It that That's helps awesome. to encourage... Uh, women in underserved minorities to learn how to write code. That is amazing. Really cool stuff. Thank you very much for for chipping in there. Um, this is part of my day job, kind of. It is kind of. I do a bit of this. Yes. 
It's part of mine. Yeah, <laughs> yeah but it, it is Max. <laughs> um, okay, so I don't want to return this name here. The Fossils, thanks so much for the subscription. And yes, Twitch subscribers get the little .NET bot emote. You'll see it. It's C Sharp bot that you can use now in the chat rooms. Um, and dot result forces await. Actually, it doesn't. It actually blocks. And and it it, it yeah. It's don't use dot result unless you're you're actually on the task and you have it completed. Um, and I I really need to get somebody on to to help me with async and await on the stream at some point. Yeah, because uh, that, that's one of the thing that is kind of ubiquitous. If I say it right. And, yes. But the thing is. The API itself is more complicated. Okay. Because now you see uh, the, the task, the async, and the await keyword, and everything looks fine. It's perfect. But as soon as you start going away from that, or you start not returning a task for async, you do async void. By the way, never do that. No, uh, don't do that. Uh, what you see as your code, one is compiled, goes into IL. It completely changes. It's kind of like flipping things like upside down. It's like taking a sock and flipping it, flipping it upside down completely. It's just rem- it's a mess. Yeah, it's rewriting your code in a way that allows the the, the, the runtime to just pick it, wait okay. and repick up on pick up on that. But we'll li- leave someone else explain it. So, uh, Cara Dog, thanks so much for the subscription. I really appreciate it and um, enjoy the .NET part. All right, so we've, I've got, I don't want this, this isn't a name that I'm receiving here. I've got a new follower, so let's call this a new follower on my variable here. Now I want to put that into something like Cosmos DB. How do I do that? And I've got to, I don't want to return something here, you know? Um, so, you might. Let's, let me, let's just clean this up so that I have this actually not um, upset at me with red underlines. There we go. Um, and let's change this to say new follower on, and this is just going to go into a log or somewhere that's actually watching this. And I can say um, on new follower dot, helps if I spell it right. And I can say stream service, put a little colon there, and then I can say new follower dot handle. All right, so, so I've kind of got the start of here. Um, please pass. Uh, so here's the thing. Do you care yes. about the, uh, the HTTP result? Do I care about it? I don't know yet. Because what we can do is that we um, we can just store the data into... Um, if we don't care about the result, we don't actually need to return anything. Okay. But if you do care about it, we can always do something about it. Okay. So, so, what, so for right now, let's just so, store this yeah. new follower information somewhere. Yes. So mm-hmm. now I'm pretty sure you don't have a Cosmos DB account or anything mm-hmm. set up. So no. we'll just write code as as if as if it was existing, so okay. that you can provision it later. Okay. Um. So let's add a new parameter to your functions. Okay. We're going to be using something that is called a binding and. Azure Functions comes with, I will not say thousands of bindings, but it comes with many bindings. Okay. So it allows you to do blob storage, so basic files, uh, tables, mm. and stuff <laughs> like that, uh, Cosmos DB, or if you if you hear about Event Grid, the way yeah. you react oh, yeah. stuff, there's bindings for that too. Okay. Uh, so what if I wanted to use bunch something, of stuff. something simple, right, like table storage, right? Since yes. I'm just storing two fields. Yes. Right? And right, I can... Table storage, I have a partition key. I could partition on my stream service, and then I have my new followers yes. over in my, my actual value that I'm storing. So Cosmos DB will uh, have better throughput than table storage most of the times. You'll okay. be able to handle more. Uh, but if we can do we can do table storage, okay. and then it's quite easy to actually just swap over to something okay. else because then it's just... It's just a, a provider that I specify here on my function. Yes. Fantastic. So, How do I do that? Um, so we're going to start by... Um, by adding an, uh, another parameters. Yep. And let me see. Now your POCO, the problem is uh, table storage functions uh, needs to have, to, to be derived from table entities. You're gonna need a bunch of other stuff. You cannot just oh, store the POCO. Okay. So, All right, so just to let's get Let's keep on Cosmos DBs. Cosmos DB will be simpler for us because we don't have to, take, to deal with the uh, abstractions of the table storage itself. Okay, so we'll we'll go with this just so we can get the simple example working and then yeah. we'll wire it up to something more complete. Do you guys later. want me to create a Cosmos DB database so you can dial it? <laughs> okay. 
Um, so one of the things we can do is add a parameter that okay. will um, so have kind of a bit of a code here. Um, basically, we're going to create a, a out parameter on our functions. Mm. Okay, so let me go after my log here because I like to have my out parameters at the end of my list of parameters here okay. so that it's a little bit clear that, that the out ones are at the end, all my input parameters are at the beginning. So I'm going to create an out parameter. Now what's my out parameter, what's my type I'm going to put on this? You can either put uh, dynamic if you don't know what you're going to do. Okay, and I don't. Or in this case you do. You want to add a new follower. Okay, so I'm going to out a new follower. Okay. Yes. And I'll call it, well, I could just do a new follower because I've already got it right there. Yeah, so you can just close that. Okay, so now you have an out, out parameter. The problem is you don't really have it bind to anything yet. So we're going to be using the uh, Cosmos DB attribute on that parameter. And you, yeah. A Cosmos DB attribute on it. All right, so I've got a red line here. Async methods cannot have ref or out parameters. Um, oh, no. <laughs> That's unfortunate. Oh That's God! A pain. See? All right. Aha! Mm. All right. So, so, so we are going to have to do the async hop here, right? Yes. Right. So if that's, I do this, that's sad. And I say, right? I can't do a dot result. I'm going to do. You have to remove the await before you I get what to do. I know what to do. I'm going to go here, mm -hmm. and I'm going to say dot uh, continue, continue with. with. Right, so that I have it, I tell it to do something. <laughs> right, so I, I know have, where you're going with that. And I'm just going to say f new follower equals f. And it's going to get upset and grouchy at me there. Cannot use ref or out parameter inside of an anonymous method lambda expression or query. Well, that stinks. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right, right, so let's get this as a task. Right, let's just say that. Right, and then I can say. Uh, new follower equals task dot, and then I can do a result. Because if I do task dot, right, uh, wait all. Nah. Mm -hmm. Is it wait all? What do I want to use? Yeah. Wait all. I think it takes a params parameter of task. There. Uh -huh. I've done this one a lot here. All right, so I've got that. So when my task finishes, so I've, I've converted this to run synchronously here, block until it's done, and then go log that result. Go write it into my new follower. Yeah. So I'm writing out a new follower object. Now you were saying that I need that's another that's Cosmos DB because we did all functions that doesn't know where you want to send it, right? Right. So we have to use a binding. So I do this binding, yes. this hint to tell it what that new follower is going to be so written to. So people who don't know, uh, we don't use C sharp a lot. Uh, you can use attributes pretty much on a lot of things, mm -hmm. and you can use it on classes, you can use it on methods, but okay. you can also use it on parameters. That's so, one of the few used ones. Like we see right now with the HTTP trigger, right? Yeah. So, so we're going to write something similar, which is called Cosmos DB. Okay, so if I do that, now it doesn't know what Cosmos DB is yet, so I probably need to bring in a, a package to enable um, that, right? Let me see which package you need for this one. Well, that depends. Are you, are, are you in .NET? You're in .NET Core. Are, are you gonna do? Are you gonna do Graph API? If you're gonna do Graph API, you need to use a Gremlin client. I have no idea. I would go with document. So approach. I would go with um, Microsoft at Azure at Web Jobs at extension the Cosmos DB package. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> that easy, easy for you to describe. Hang on, let's look at this. Microsoft. Dot, yeah. Where am I going? Azure. Azure mm -hmm. dot Cosmos DB. I'm uh, sorry, web web jobs, web jobs, web jobs. Web jobs. Web jobs. Uh, don't question the naming. <laughs> and Cosmos DB should be closed by. He says that like he was here when it happened. It's funny. Yeah, it, it was right. <laughs> uh, or you can just filter it down by dot extensions. <laughs> And I see document DB. It's at the bottom right here. All right, so I'll grab this one and I'll install it by clicking the little arrow. Yeah. Cool. All right. Just keeping an eye on things. Uh, da, 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 da. All right. Type or namespace name Cosmos DB. Right. No, I have just ready for the pilot. Well, I need to. We don't have the usings. Right. So let's control dot on that. It still doesn't like it. Let's rebuild. By the way, everything we see that doesn't work in this demo will be uh, will be addressed. 
My audio is 3D. It is blowing my mind. It's because we've got cool Channel 9 microphones here. And actually, I think our camera moved. Good Brady, can you do me a favor and twist it back towards me? Yeah. Keep going, keep going. And again, 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 again. One more, more. I think you moved. Fantastic. You moved the uh, support. Does that yeah. works? Yep. Thank cool. you. All right. Sorry if I'm Darth Vadering over here. I'll try to breathe lighter. All right, so it doesn't. It still doesn't know what Cosmos DB is, even though we installed it. I'm snoring. Hmm. That's it. Right. If I say Cosmos DB, it doesn't know what that is. If I control dot, it still doesn't know what. That uh, is. DB is supposed to be all caps, but I don't think it's. Uh, no, that would matter, but it's still not there. So let's start to add to you uh, using Microsoft the Azure Node Web Jobs at the top to see if it makes a difference. Here, no control dot on that. Nope. All right. So, so there was many ways to do the bindings. I just, this one normally is the attributes, three attributes way. I will, I will look into it. I was not expecting a demo fail this morning. Nice. Well, no, it's not a demo fail. We're going to figure out what this is. Exactly. But it demo does fails. happen. You Wait, you weren't expecting a demo fail during a live coding session? I mean, seriously. That's, Come on, dude. that's part of the fun here. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. So, what's where do we get the Cosmos DB attribute? Let's go look it up. Yeah. So this is Cosmos DB attributes, adding Cosmos DB bindings to functions. Fantastic. So let's take a look-see here. Bing. It's like we planned this. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, so Cosmos DB. We're going to be either really using the output attributes on, on, on the menu here. <coughs> okay. That's where I actually <coughs> took the uh, the package that's at the top here. So use the Cosmos, which is defined in NuGet package, Microsoft Azure Web Jobs extensions, Cosmos DB. So I added that. Now it doesn't like it. And actually, look at this. I've got a yellow triangle here. Mm -hmm. Microsoft.NET SDK functions. And it does not like this one here. Let's see if we have something in our output. From package manager. We'll look at this. This package may not be full, full, fully compatible with your project because this project is .NET Standard 2.0 and this was restored using .NET Framework 4.6.1. Love packages. Um, all right, so this is Web Job Extensions Cosmos DB 3.0 beta 6. Was the 3.0 beta 4? Package restore failed. Rolling back changes. All right. All right. So well, we'll can we? Well, wait, 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 wait. Can we change your? What? What? For the love of, what uh, project? I'm actually trying to look into your CS project, but it's refreshing slowly. Oh crap! That's right. Um, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to figure out if you've got four six one in there. If you do, we should just take it out and maybe. I don't. It has .NET Standard in the project. It does? Okay. Yep. So I will do an edit on the project so that everybody can see what this looks like. Well, the .NET Standard project has, for its target framework, .NET Standard. Yes. Um, right. So it's not going to default to .NET Framework there. And if I say okay. dot .Cosmos D DB. Yeah, that makes sense. Right? So, so, we, so we found a kink in, in the documentation. Well, this says it depends on .NET Standard version 2.0, which relies on Microsoft Azure Web Jobs extensions mm -hmm. greater than beta 4, and I am using the pre-release, so I should get that version. But when I do the install, um, the package Web API Client 5.2.2 was restored using .NET Framework 4.6.1. So the client that this is pointing to for Cosmos DB depends on .NET Framework. Not mm -hmm. .NET standard. So we're uh, we, so we let's find a do this. I'm, I'm pretty sure we found a kink. This should, uh, .NET standard should be supported. Hang on, you're you're being too hard on yourself. Oh, this is looking at where'd that go? That client that it aired out. Microsoft ASP.NET Web API client five two two. Let's do that. Microsoft ASP.NET. Mm -hmm. uh, right. What was that again? The client. ASP.NET Web API client. Spell it right. Fingers don't fail me now. There it is. 524, and there is a 524 preview one, which depends on. That's standard. So I will pin this one. 
So by installing that package explicitly, it should pin that down. There we go. And if I remove this and now go after, what was it again? Microsoft this. extensions, and let's install that. And it is not going to bypass that package reference there. Well, that is a pain. Hmm. So, <clears throat> right, let me just take a look, see here, if we look at our package file, our project file again, there's my package reference to the web API client that uses .NET Standard 2.0. But if I look over here, and if we go grab this package, I'm gonna do this by hand, because I We're can. debugging with you guys. Absolutely, this is the best part of doing a live stream, is mm -hmm. doing out. things live. So this is 3.0 beta 4, and this relies on Net standard version 2.0. So that's still so good. We're still good there. And he still is. Doesn't like it, it. it. This one's still grouchy because it's pointing. So let me go down into Microsoft Azure Web Jobs. It's pointing to 3.0.0 beta 4. So somewhere in the chain here, there's a there's a break where it's not. Yeah, I told you to go find that. There it is. So this one references .NET standard version 2. And it, this is not directly referencing that web API client. Good, we're good on that one. All right, so let's walk up the chain. So the next one was extensions. And this re relied on ncrontab. I think we found our difficulty here. ncrontab by Atif Aziz. And this relies on .NET standard version one. So that should work if we install that. That looks good. All right. So let's keep walking back. Not that one. Uh, da -da -da -da. Extensions. So now let's try this one, which points to those two, which I do have installed now. And now it works. So let's keep walking up the last bit of the chain, which was dot cosmos db. And if I point to this one, and the other one is document db change feed processor. I don't think it's. That one that's gonna give us problem. Done. So we have everything installed. Fantastic. And look, there they all are. If I come back over here, and now Cosmos DB works. That's how you debug all right. packages. Streams done. Boom. Let's go. Done. <laughs> drop the mic. I, I don't don't drop your phone. phone. Don't drop my phone either. That would be bad. Okay. So now how do I, uh, so I've got a reference to Cosmos DB. So what the function does is yes. it'll, when it writes out to this object, this gives it a hint and says, this is the Cosmos DB to write it to, and I would give it connection yes. string information here. Yeah, if you open the parenthesis here, uh, because we call it parenthesis, some people call it brackets. Uh. <laughs> That's for my colleague, Maria. Oh, great to see you, uh, Suze, you know, no opcat, have a good one. Thanks so much for stopping by, we appreciate you joining us. So here you see a bunch of optional parameters. Um, it's so not brackets, it's parentheses. Yes. Okay. So we have a couple parameters here. <laughs> round brackets, all right. <laughs> so, round brackets, oh man. Or square parentheses. Right. All right, here we go. So the, let's just go one parameter below. So we oh. can, yeah. The, this looks like a connection string I would build to connect to like a SQL yes. server or an Oracle database, MySQL. Exactly. So a database name, a collection name. So a collection name would be effectively like a table. Yes. So, um, okay. so you're gonna create a database name that you, Right, I'm going to create something like my Cosmos yes. Analytics, and I haven't done this yet. So no, so we don't have any Cosmos to be in the back. Right, and okay, all, we're probably going to leave my spot to uh, to Brady before we're uh, yep, we're absolutely. all done through that. But. So uh, we'll call this. Uh, these are we'll, the collection. The table yes. will be followers. Um, let's call it new followers, and then properties. The properties I'm going to write. So now, now the thing you're going to need uh, is a connection string. Okay. So this will normally be the uh, environment, uh, uh, a variable environment that uh, environment variable that you're going to be using to uh, to connect to that uh, to the connection string because you don't want to have the full connection string in your code, right? Because this is just bad. Mm -hmm. So it's a secret. Don't compile yes. it. Put it out there. I yeah. don't want folks in my GitHub repository to see this. But also is that once you deploy your functions, 
that environment variables is going to be on that function. And if you are not working on a streams like that, or you're working in a, in a corporate environment, you will want to be able to change those uh, those variables as you move environment from dev to integration to productions. Absolutely. So, so that allows you to do that without compromising your code because this is going to end up on GitHub, right? So you don't Absolutely. want to have that on GitHub either. So if I compile this and I deploy this, it'll start when yes. I pass messages to this, it'll start writing those into my Cosmos yes. DB. Cool. And at that point, you can... can what this function is basically, it's just receiving the message and passing it off to, to Cosmos DB. Okay. And at that point, you could do any kind of business logic that you want. Sure. Well, business. Um, I'm all business. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy! So okay. you could do any, anyway. You could do any kind of a, a, a funny, uh, funny stuff in there. So let's okay. say that you don't want to log people from Mixer or you don't want to log people from Twitch because there's a feud or whatever. Mm. That's where you could do it. Okay. Um, but obviously, you want to store everything. Yeah. But beside the business logic. This will allow you to, like, we're, what, 60 followers right now? 60 uh, viewers. Yep. 60 viewers, 1,000 followers. Um, and as people come in, let's say when you reach 1,000 viewers and you want to, like, you want to have your analytics when people join and leave, yep. um, you're right. going to get a lot of flow. It's, you, so sure. you don't want to be like, sure. while you're on stream, scale up your machines. Mm. So this will allow you to just have your function running, send all of the information to Cosmos DB, whether there's one people watching to a thousand people watching at the end of a stream, and don't care about, about hosting. And by the way, once you're done streaming, yep. you don't even need to deprovision anything. It, it, it only I only get charged when it executes. Yes, and you don't get charged for the first million executions. Wait, wait. Did you say million? Yes, one million. Is it a million a month or a million total? You don't get charged for the first million. Yeah, I might. Welcome, Encrypted Afro. Great to see you. Thanks for joining the stream. I, I love wow. the username, I'd, man. I'd love to see that. Encrypted Afro? Yeah. How does that work? I guess it's straight. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to commit this. Thank you so much for yeah. joining me. Let, I want to come back to this in a future stream. Let's yes. take a look at actually getting this wired up. You get a lot to, of invitees here, right? Yeah, yeah. And, and how to get that, and how to actually send these messages in from my my stream tools that are actually working here. So when Steve comes up, yes, we actually trigger this and we start logging that information. Yeah. So that, that's by the way, that's the funniest part is that since you get a free one one million free executions per month, that's uh, insane. Yeah, that is insane, and in that you don't pay until after. Uh, you can basically get free compute. Wow! Because you're not using you, you, unless you're like you, you go crazy, crazy popular, like CNN popular. Sure. You're not gonna get a million executions. In do you, do you know who I yet. am? Look at all the you people will watching. get there, man. But this will scale so that when you reach those kind of numbers. Uh, you're not going to have to pay that much any anyway because sure. you, because you're not going to be paid after that. You know, we're not going to be like, oh, you have to pay for the instances. No, you don't. Mm. You just pay for the per execution still. So. Okay, cool. Well, it's, it's thanks so much for joining me. Thank I you appreciate so much. it. I, 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 just I learned something. Can handshake people. I know, right? Usually, I've got folks on Skype. They're above me. <laughs> so this like is kind of neat. Virtual today. handshake. All right, I you're so. done. Get out. Ah. Get out. Get out. Get out. Get out. That's awesome. Next one down. There we go. So you've heard Brady kind of in the background here. Let's bring Brady over so he can jump in. Because if there's one thing that I know my buddy Brady Gaster knows, it's SignalR. And when I showed him our Stream Tools project here, and he saw how we're doing some of the live updates for those follower numbers up top in the viewer count, he said, dude. Because you know that's how he says it. Just dude. Dude. There's better ways to do this. This is the way I did SignalR when I was first learning it. There's so many better ways to do this. I was like, all right. Help let's me see, out here. Let's see, what's really funny about that is actually talking to, uh, let me see if he's here. Is Griff here yet? Kevin Griffin? No, a guy named Griff? No, uh, he's not here. No, he's slide not here. over a little bit. Slide over, slide over. Oh, so we can get you, on. you can see the camera right there, dude. All right. All right. Fun. Okay. So, so what's I've the hat? My, let's start there. What's I've got the my hat? red hook hat on. What? I've got my red hook hat on. Red hook. Local brewery. What's red hook? Local brewery. Local brewery. Okay. Uh, I think I've been there. Yeah, you have. They okay. they used to have two. There was one in uh, Kirkland, and there's one up in Seattle. They closed the one in Kirkland. Really? So I'm wearing this hat to ask you guys to reopen it. It was great. We miss it. 
Um, yeah. yeah. That stinks. No, it's not. It's not an ad for Red Hook. I'm just. I'm making a, a plea to them to reopen in uh, Kirkland. Uh, Fossils here. He's saying, you know, we need to put a hashtag ad on that for for Red Hook. It's not Red Hook. Not bad. So, so, um, so yeah, right. we were we were before talking. we get before we get into refactoring. But, you know, go ahead and explain. I'm gonna while you're doing that, I'm gonna real quick create a feature branch. Got it. So we got some place to work. Cool. Okay. So Jeff and I got to talking because uh, I used to be really in the signal R. Um, I've done a couple presentations around and with Jeff on the topic. Uh, worked pretty closely with Damien and David uh, in the early days of signal R and really, really liked the, uh, the, the, the package and the, the idea. Um, but uh, I've, I've gone in other directions like functions and Azure and a bunch of other stuff and I've kind of lost lost track of what's been happening in the signal our world mm. and uh, uh, when Jeff asked me I took a look at it and a lot of the practices that I used to implement um, uh, you don't need them anymore um, they've like really improved it oh yeah um, so uh, I was actually talking to Griff last night um, let me see if he's here he's not here yet Kevin Griffin you're referring to yeah Kevin Griffin cool uh, Kevin Griffin's not here I'm gonna ping him on Twitter real quick um, he's not he's not uh, uh, in uh, channel nine, um, he's not, he's not here. I'll, I'm 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 gonna ping him. I'm gonna ping him. ping Kevin Griffin. What is it? Do I even have him? There it is. Boom. There For is. online uh, coding stuff with Signal R. Online coding and stuff with Signal R. Jeff. Um, CP, CP hops in. So I got to talking to Griff yesterday and he, uh, he was like, well, you can do this with SignalR now and you can do this with SignalR. And one of the things that I found really interesting is, is he sharing the code? Yeah, he's, he's sharing the code. Is if I were to, if I were to pop in, I'm sorry, I'm getting all these guys. If I were to pop over here, will it actually open up to the right joint if I go? So what I want to do is go into your startup services guy and you can see... Um, is it opening up on yours? Oh, yeah. There, everybody, okay. can, everybody can see where okay, you are. Cool. So if you see this guy right here, this Ad Singleton uh, follower hub. Yeah. Um, I don't know if it's in, it's in the right place here. But if you see that guy. Sorry, I've got to close this one. I'm getting too many alerts here. Um, this thing uh, basically uh, allows you to take a hub and slap a hub into your you know IOC basket. So, and, all right. Hang on. Let's, let's make sure everybody knows. Signal R, right? We, we kind of, we've used a couple of terms. We want to make sure folks are okay. So a, a Signal R hub, what would you say Signal R hub is? God, it's been so long. A Signal R hub is kind of the, uh, it's it's that center point that lives on the server. Okay. And the idea behind the hub is, uh, it's just like a hub, if you can imagine a hub and a hub and a spoke model. Oh, um, okay. It's like a, it's a hub and a spoke model. Basically sure. what you've got is on the server, you've got this thing that HTTP messages can get sent to. Okay. And it turns around and it sends them back out to all the connected clients. Okay. Um, and... Typically, it does that using WebSockets. WebSockets is kind of at the top of the top of the stack. If because uh, you get you get really good throughput, low right. latency, right? Active okay. connection, yada yada yada. And I don't need to think about using WebSockets. It right. just does it. It just does it. Okay. It just does it. And and that's the thing. I can't remember the order that it happens in, but. Uh, it's like I've never presented on Signal or help so. Uh, so weird. Got like a hundred presentations on the topic. Um, so the idea behind Signal R is that it's an abstraction on top of various ways that you can implement real time HTTP. Um, okay. What it does is it says, Mr. Server, Mrs. Client, uh, how does this work? And you know, like like like, what are you capable of doing? And if what do you both, support? What do you support? Okay. And if they're both capable of using WebSockets, they go with WebSockets. Fantastic. If one's capable of WebSockets, the other's not. It says. I can't remember the order, forgive me. Okay. Can you handle server sent events? If neither one can handle server sent events, it basically backs off until it gets down to like what you probably did in the old days of just doing HTTP polling. Oh so it gosh, just yes. poll, 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 poll. So oh, yeah. let's just presume that uh, you were on WebSockets because most of our clients and servers support it now. Oh, thank, yeah. thank goodness. Um, all so modern presume, browsers. All right? modern browsers. And, 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 and we, we kind of got a little bit of help from our friends with the, uh, right, the Spectre, and uh, mm -hmm. right, those bugs kind of force people to say, hey, I've got to update to the, the latest browser. Mm -hmm. So boom, suddenly everybody's got web sockets, everybody's got web assembly mm -hmm. because they want to protect against those features, it's right, almost, those issues. It's almost like it was uh, planned. If it was a browser maker that found those issues, I could believe it, mm -hmm. but it's actually a chip issue. That's a chip issue, yeah. I'm okay, anyway. Nefarious. All right. So anyway, that's a hub. 
Okay, so the core okay. the core thing, and, and I say core, I don't mean .NET core. No, no, no. Like 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 the the the, the most, central the, the central piece, the okay. most important thing in SignalR is your hub because it's this it's this thing. It's that doing that negotiation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So it's like if he's a hub and I want to deliver a message to Max. I would tell Jeff, Jeff would tell Max, Max would reply, Jeff would tell me, yada, cool. yada, yada. Okay. Times, times a gajillion, you know, because you can have a lot yeah. of Oh my moments. gosh. Okay. So, yeah. So, um, so things like when, when I think of like Slack, yeah. right? That's just a web page that I'm going to and it's pushing those messages down mm -hmm. to me mm -hmm. as they happen. Same thing with things like Teams mm -hmm. or um, um, when I go into like Office Docs online. And, I, mm -hmm. and just like I'm seeing here in Visual Studio and I mm -hmm. see people's names following around that's actually something that's being pushed to me from a website mm -hmm. and going around yeah very cool griff's awesome. here by the way hey griff what's going on guy named griff yeah guy named griff's here um we were just talking about you so it's nice to see you uh he says hub to signal r as a controller to mvc yeah pretty much pretty much sure but uh, you know we just want to make it clear for folks who aren't familiar with the mvc pattern here. right right so uh we, I, I love picking on griff it's great we invite him and then we tease him it's great um so anyway Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, do we want to explain dependency injection and version of control, or do we presume people get that? No, we'll just move past okay, it. Cool. Um, that's the thing that's happening. So back in the old days, uh, you would basically have to instantiate a signal or hub on the server side. Mm -hmm. And uh, like an example that uh, Griff and I kind of talked talk, talk to together at one point was, let's say I want to expose a, you know, signal is one of those complex clients. Oh, and, yeah. and you might have a, like I might have a device mm -hmm. that wants to ping my server and then I will notify all the connected clients. That device might not be able to connect over a SignalR hub, but it can very easily make a REST call. So wait, you, you, you made a jump there that I want to make sure that folks that are watching are, are aware of. Mm -hmm. we, we were talking about the web right. and you brought up a device. Right. So I don't have to be in a browser to use this. I could That's use correct. other that's correct. Client libraries. All That's right. That's correct. That's absolutely correct. Cool. You can use uh, uh, SignalR is supported on uh, in, in .NET client, in JavaScript client. There was an experimental Java client for a while. Okay. Um, uh, I've done it with a Node client. Um, cool. And that's been, that's, that's sort of interesting. Okay. Um, so, so because SignalR is all open source, mm -hmm. if you want to use that rich server side component, and on whatever your client environment is, mm -hmm. there's tools out there there's that tools. will help you build yep. and make your client. Yep, yep. Very That's cool. exactly right. Uh, I, I like what uh, David Fowler, uh, the dev. Who, the engineer. Uh, the engineer who oh, yeah. helped build the uh, the thing and all of the things. Um, we love pronouns. Yes, we do. He would say, uh, he would say, a signal R is just HTTP, which is, it's kind of interesting because it defies the basic principle of HTTP, which is that it's asynchronous, but different. Different conversation. Um, anyway, the nice thing about uh, what's happening with Core mm -hmm. uh, SignalR is that I have the capability of taking a hub and throwing a hub directly into my services basket, uh, like within my configure services CS or my startup CS, if you don't sure. abstract it out the way Jeff has done. It's yep. just very, I love it. It's fantastic. Um, uh, but obviously, you want to add SignalR first, and then you would add your singleton hubs, and et cetera, et cetera. So Jeff and I got to talking, and, and there were a couple of things that he was doing around some of the eventing. And what I'll do now is I'll kind of go in here to... Do, I'm going to follow do. you. That's fine. I'm going to go into Mixer service. Okay. Um, so and, this is a class that, that does the connection to Mixer to connect and get information about folks that are interacting with the stream on Mixer. Correct. And that actually implements this iStream service guy yes. right here, which I've just opened up. And in iStream service, Jeff has this event class yes and when i saw this i that this is the part where i started giggling and i said hey have you seen uh thanks for the sub max <laughs> it's like right it. over there uh, sorry uh i'm new here um <laughs> so uh when i saw this i, I kind of thought of uh, of, of, of a, the, the the web api plus signal or hub example that i was talking about which was i in, in my particular case i wanted a web job Right. Uh, I wanted some, like whenever something happened in a web job, yep. I wanted the web job to call my web app okay. using REST, okay. uh, landing on a web API controller. Within that web API controller's code, I would turn around and I would hit a signal or hub. So, okay. so, if, so if the web job pings my site, my site would reach out and ping all of my other uh, clients that happen to be connected. Okay. Okay, I could, I could probably draw it. If we had a marker. If we had a marker. They're over there. Can you grab one? Go with the blue. The blue will stand out. 
Oh, that was lovely. So, so we've never had drawing on here. Look at this. We've not never done well. Sarah did a little bit of drawing. Sadoo. Okay, so look at we'll this. See how high I can get. Let me block myself off here. Yeah, there you go. You're good. I'm just getting myself up. Um, so let's say up here, I would have my uh, web job. Okay. And my web job would basically send an HTTP connection or an HTTP message, just a REST a sorry, HTTPR. It would send an HTTP message to a web API controller. Mm -hmm, okay. Mm -hmm. This controller would then talk to a SignalR hub because essentially, whenever you would create one of these SignalR hubs, you would have one on the server. And, and yes. you kind of had this hub abstraction that you could talk to. Now, what, okay. what happened in the non-core, in the early SignalR stuff, was there was this long, I think it was global.signalr.connectionmanager.github context. Yeah. And then you could get an instance of that hub. Sure. And it was sort of a buried method that you, that you had to find. But basically what would happen here is whenever these messages came in, the SignalR hub would talk to all the clients. Okay. And all the clients would, would, would wake up and do something. So the so in your scenario, you had a web job that was that was monitoring something in Azure, a queue, yeah. a connection. Mm -hmm. Kind of like we, we saw with Max with exactly. the functions. Mm -hmm. So something would happen in the web job and it would say, oh, I need to notify everybody about this. Mm -hmm. And you would fire an HTTP message over to a web API endpoint. Correct. And that endpoint would then... It was like a proxy. Kick off a notification. Pretty much. Okay. So, so really my, my, my web API controller was almost like a proxy to my SignalR hub. Okay. Um, and the way I had originally done that was to kind of do a lot of the stuff that you've done here. Okay. Which is to have all these service classes with interfaces or, or, or with events and, yep, yep. And, and whenever something would happen on the server I would fire an event and I would capture that event in some other class and talk to my SignalR hub and I think I talked to Dave and Damien and they were like why don't you just get the you know get the hub context mm. so then I learned about github context well the other day when Jeff uh, invited me to take a peek through the code I started looking through this stuff and I saw this and I went oh wow you mean now with the loveliness of .NET Core and the fantastic advances we've made in like uh, IoT, uh, IOC and uh, DI in there. Sure. We can now literally IOC add a single... IOC, inversion, inversion of control, control DI, DI, dependency injection. Cool. Um, so with all that in play, now in ASP.NET Core, we could actually add a, sing add a hub as a singleton, which is yes. fantastic. So that still led me to be a little bit confused because... Jeff still has all these event handlers in here. And the more I looked at the code the other day, I, I'm, still, I'm still convinced we can do this better. Okay. And, 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 here's, and here's why. So as I walk through this code, so what I'll do is I'll, um, I'll leave this guy open. I'll close the function. And I'm going to go right over here to follow a client. And what Jeff has done in here, which is, which is great, I totally respect this, is that he... Uh, Scott Kate's calling me. I cannot answer right now. Uh, sorry, boss. Um... Ping Scott and tell him. Yeah, let's the just, hey. Hey, Scott, we're on a stream here. Thanks. Thanks, buddy. No problem. He knows I'm here. So the first thing I noticed when I started looking through your code, um, and those of you who've been on projects with me know that I'll, I'll, I'll check in code like this, is that I noticed that you have all these really awful empty lines. So I went through first and I did this because, you know, OCD. Oh, don't do that to me. Oh, no, absolutely. Do well, see, I, I, I would have forgiven you had you not done it in one of them, but not in the other ones. Oh, so you no. actually had three methods, two of which had two empty lines, one of which did. No. No. It's a readability thing. I want folks to be able to see and have space around that stuff. Would you tell Jeff that you can... Mr. Regs says shame. Shame. To who? Me or to Jeff? Anyway. All right. It anyway. doesn't matter. Code is so, code. It all goes so, away. So what Jeff did here that I really liked was yes. that, uh, like, you can never have too many levels of abstraction. That's, right. That's, don't listen to me. It's it, every, every computer science problem can be solved with another layer of exactly. abstraction. Exactly. So what Jeff had done is he created this follower client, yes. which really is kind of a follower wrapper, if you will. Or not a follower wrapper. It's like a follower hub wrapper. It's, it's the real MC. It's the real MC. So what, what Jeff does is he passes this follower client around. Um, I, don't, I don't know if you're sticking that into I, sticking that in with configure services. 
I you're sticking that? Yeah. You're adding that as a singleton. Right there on 26. Here's what's interesting. Here's what you're doing that I found to be interesting. Please. So you're adding follower client yes. as a singleton yes. because you want to have all this, you know, convenient ways of doing things. Sure. But then inside of your services, you're still, rather than like call that hub, which is asynchronous by default, yes. you're still firing an event and then handling that event and then calling your hub. So what I was going to propose is hang on, that- Hang on, hang on, yeah. Let's back up and let's hit that real quick. Sure. I'm, I'm firing an thing. event mm -hmm. and then calling the hub. Yes, because I, right, I want to be decoupled. I want to just listen for that. Sure. Okay. So how can we make that better? Better. It's not better. It's amazing. It's not, it's not that amazing. It's just different. Okay. Go ahead. There's no, there's no quality here. Okay. Um, it just depends on what That's you're going Brady for. Brady Gaster is saying there's no quality. There's no quality. There. There's That's no quality. That mean. There's no quality. There's no quality. So what, so what I see that he's doing here is he's got this updated invoke and I can't remember where you're actually handling that event. Where do you handle the event? I handle it in the stream service class. Stream there. service. Not that one. That's Twitch. I know. We don't care about Twitch. You're getting that? Yes, we do. Yeah. We like Twitch. So, so you're handling all of them in here. Right. Because so the architecture that we're looking at, I have a Twitch service, I have a mixer service, and then I have an aggregate service called stream service mm -hmm. that we're, we're looking at here. And this one is what will provide that total that you see in the corner and the total number of followers that are used by both the follower goal uh, meter in the middle and the followers count next to it. But see, you've got that hub in there as a singleton. So it's almost oh. like you've, you've got the hub and as a singleton, you've got the wrapper around your hub as a singleton and you've got your stream service as a singleton mm -hmm. and you're basically hop, 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 hop. Sure. Whereas if, if you were just going directly to that hub through your, through your follower client abstraction, mm -hmm. it might be fewer layers and fewer like asynchronous magic. Okay, show me, show me what you're talking about. So, so what I was thinking is, I'll go, I'll just do it in fake service. Um, so I was thinking about doing is in fake service is basically... Hang on, let me... Yeah. The fake service is actually, a, it's a stub service that we can use for testing um, that doesn't actually connect out to anything. It has a timer right. that automatically um, counts up the number of uh, followers and viewers. So we right. can test without actually connecting to Twitch and, uh, and Mixer. Right. So does this guy have, does fake service or any of these services, does it have a built-in uh, reference to uh, uh, follower client? Nope. It doesn't? Nope. So we could effectively... While you're doing that, thank you so much, JF Cald, for following us. Is that it? Follower client? There we yep. Go. There you go. And then I would say, uh, I'll do this, follower client. So, and you're seeing Brady type here. He's typing on his machine, which is a Mac, yep. running Visual Studio Code. This is running uh -huh. off of my machine, a Lenovo Yoga, and uh, I'm in Visual Studio 2017 watching and, and passively connected because I'm using Visual Studio Live Share and I have Brady's session here pinned, you can see in the top corner. Mm -hmm. All right, so you're directly accessing the client now inside my service yeah. instead of raising an event and letting all that happen. So what I, what I think I see you doing is we're going to drop out that extra layer of abstraction right. and access the follower client right. directly. That's what I was thinking about doing. Okay. Do I have access to that puppy in here? Access to what? Follow client. You should. It's right there. I don't know if I'm getting IntelliSense. You it needs to be a capital F on that. No, you're not getting IntelliSense. That's weird. That feels bad. Here, let me help you. So here's what I'll do. I'll control period. Did you name it underscore with a lowercase f? Fix it. That's... No, we're not OCD at all. Not at all. There we go. That's better. All right. So you were down... Where was it? Here. Yep. So now if we control dot... All right. So now um, my number of followers has updated. I could say update followers and I can pass in the number of new followers. There you go. So number of followers. Yeah. So now you've got like one less event bounce. You've got a okay. slightly cleaner code. Okay. I mean, yeah, you're going directly directly against your client, which goes sure. directly against your hub, sure. but that hub's already a singleton. So, um, oh, there's our friend Scott Kate joining us here on the stream. Thank you, Scott. Hey, I appreciate Scott. you joining us. Um, so I, you're suggesting then if I come down here to where I do my viewer update, so where I'm raising the event, let's comment that out. And I would do the same thing. I would say yeah. this dot follower client, and I would say update viewers. And then here I would pass in 
the service name, which in this case is, do I actually have, is the service name on Name. This? You got name. It's like I planned it. Boing. And then the, it's now number of viewers. Okay, so now I've eliminated an event. Um, so I, 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 there's an extra layer of connectivity and things that are being registered that I just don't need to worry about. Um, they Janescu, they you're don't right. Your extra lines. Less hops, oh, dude. That you're, was like that was like ten minutes ago. Yeah, but you're gonna get like a really OCD PR for me later. It's gonna be hot. <laughs> Attack cat. Thank you for the follow. <laughs> I don't know what to say about about white space here. It's gonna be awesome, uh, dude. I'm I'm gonna strip out like half your code. Don't awesome. do it. Don't do it, man. I, I can reject that pull request. Yeah, that is the that is the a number one thing that you as a project manager can always do is reject what your engineers submit. Or as an open source uh, project owner, you can always say no. I don't like your contribution. You could. Yeah. Okay. So, so what you've done is effectively <coughs> reduce the need to have the stream service object. Now, if I go back to stream service, let me um, let me hop over there. So I'll control comma in Visual Studio to bring up my sure. type search here. So and, and, search. And, and as Jeff is doing that, you know, one thing one thing I want to point out here is that I mean, I mean, how, how many shows have you had now? Twenty, thirty? Oh gosh, we are in March. I started in November. Yeah, I'm over 30. Okay. So, 30 shows in, and this has been the project the whole time? No, we bounced through a couple different projects. Okay. This is... But this has one. been like a big one? Oh, yeah. Okay, okay. So, if you think about it, like he's had 30-ish shows, um, and let's say 20-ish shows have, have touched this this code base. I mean, that's kind of that's kind of realistic. I mean, like, think yeah. of like if you're working on a project, over time, the code's going to, you know, it's going to grow. And there's going to be all these different styles that pop in there. Absolutely. And if you look at if you look at these apps, you know, if you look at your code forensically and you kind of start walking through, you can go, oh, I can see on this show you kind of went in this direction and now you've been coding because you went in that direction. Mm -hmm. and, and maybe, you know, we could we could do a little bit of, you know. Okay. Sure. Here. So, well, and we did a little bit of that with Steve last week. Yep. So, um, Jazzy Noop, thank you for hosting me over there on stream, on, um, where are you at? Oh, over on Mixer, thank you. Oh, cool. I appreciate the host. Um, if you don't follow uh, Jazzy Noop, check check out their stream. All right, um, so you think I can get rid of this event here. Now that event inside my service, this updated event that I've- well, I mean, we, we could test it to. with fake. You know what I mean? If, we, if you test it with fake and it works with fake, then we, you know, then we gotta start. Digging into then it. we can pull it yeah, out yeah, yeah. of of yeah. Uh, Twitch and Mixer. Mm -hmm. I mean, we, if that's if that's what you want to do, we can take a vote. We can take a vote. What do you? What, this this is not a democracy here. This is Jeff World. Absolutely, I can carbon date my code by the coding style used. There's our friend Meat Popsicle. I, and um, every time I say that, it's really yeah. I'm, I'm, I love bacon. Mm. Okay, bacon um, is meat candy. You know that, right? There's a so there's a place in in Bellevue here called Lot Three. Is that what it's called? Yeah. And they make candy bacon. Oh, you're also thinking of um, uh, well that's good. Candy bacon is good. But have you been to Tipsy Cow? Tipsy Cow. Explain to me Tipsy Cow. Tipsy Cow is a restaurant in uh, Redmond. And okay. They, they kind of they kind of have these burgers that are just like next level. Yeah. They've got a like, specialty burger joint. Like yeah. We totally good over here. Um, but they have an app that's deep fried bacon. Deep fried bacon. They take the bacon, they fry it, and then they serve it. I'm gonna have a coronary just thinking about it. I know, that. dude, it's insane. Okay. Um, so your suggestion is then the event for this, now that we're done, thank you for joining us for food talk. Of course. Um, all right, I'm gonna jump down into hosted, uh, not hosted service. I wanna go into stream service. Hosted service is an ASP.NET core feature that allows us to put classes in the background and run. Mm -hmm. um, so there's my event. So you think we can actually eliminate this? Well, I wouldn't do it yet because you've got those other two implementations. Oh no, I'm eliminating it. Um, what's, I've got a red line here under configure services. Did you break something? Did you, did you break Probably, something? it's me. Oh, okay, look, here, new fake service. Oh. There's no argument given that corresponds to the oh. number of, so you did, you broke it. Um, so why does that not go ahead? Uh, uh. So, now you, so that's weird. So basically, you can't. Uh, go ahead, hang on, hang on. We're cool. We're cool. Check it out. So we are configuring the service uh -huh. here, 
and we're passing in uh, all of our constructors here so that um, so that we can generically spin these up, yep. right? But That's we need to actually, right, we need to go through and we need to build all of our dependencies in the service collection so we can inject the appropriate thing here. Yeah. So there is... I mean, is there a way to use... Oh, this this would be educational for me. Here we go. Like Check this out. Look, look, it's right well, here. Well, you've already got those two in the basket. Can you build... Oh, yeah, there you go. It's right here on line 72. So I used this technique before. I build a temporary instance of the dependency injection container as I'm still configuring other things. I like it. So I'm going to go up here. I'm just going to copy and drop this in here. Yeah, cool. good guys. Thanks See you, so buddy. Much. Catch you later, dude. See you, man. There goes uh, Max is taking off. Say bye, so Max. I think I think we have a friend or two from Channel Nine that's going to drop in a little bit here. Okay. They they promised me on. They promised. They threatened me. There's one now. Oh dear lord. I made it. Here comes our our my first guest wandering in. Unplanned, unannounced, um, and uh, you're not on camera because the camera's over here. Dude. Oh, okay, okay. So Hi. Slide in, slide in, say Hi. hello. Seth Juarez, hello. How's Good it going? Good to see you, sir. Thank you for joining us. I said I would you? come, briefly, if I briefly. could. Briefly, yeah. and, and plunder the code. Yeah, why aren't you using our good cameras? Because that one, I couldn't get into OBS. Oh, we have a device for that. I know, but I can't get my setup working. Oh, uh, so. I see. So I've kind of got to do a jerry rig thing, and so literally, um, if if you've seen on my blog, I I blogged about my my travel setup, and I've literally got three machines here just to coordinate and run the stream. There's a lot of machines up in here, man. It is. It, temperatures up like like five degrees in this room, and it's not just because hot stuff, Mr. Seth Warris. Right, right. I still have writing on the wall here that I've I not right. erased yet. And I see folks have signed the wall in some places here. You know, Cameron was here, I see. Lady Nagaga was mm. here. Caitlin. That's all my writing right there. That's all you? Mm-hmm. Okay. So there's there's stuff over here. Oh, my gosh. That like all the walls are are whiteboard here. That's kind of crazy. So we built this thing right, and then like it was a white wall, and we figured out that the shows that were happening literally look like you were like in a gulag somewhere. And so we're like, let's put something up so people can write something on the wall because it it won't look like we're in like a prison. Right. And Brady just did a diagram. I don't know if it helps, but so what what are y'all writing? Signal or dude. Mm -hmm. Oh, did we release that finally for NetCore? It's Core? not released yet for ASP.NET Core. We're still in a preview, mm -hmm. right? ASP.NET Core 2.1 uh, preview was released. So folks can test that out. Um, but what we're doing is if you look here, so this is what we're broadcasting here. You can see there's OBS and there's Seth staring at us. Intently. And intently. Yeah. So the, the widgets that we have across the top of the stream here that I'm mm -hmm. pointing at, right? So this bar here for our architecture workshop follower goal um, it shows in the middle we have 1,074 current followers across mm -hmm. Mixer and Twitch, but this widget is being generated by ASP.NET Core. Oh! It's just a web page, and OBS allows me to embed that in the video, right? It burns it into the video for me. Same thing with the followers count here in the top right corner. That's cool. And the viewers count next to that. So here's where SignalR comes into okay. the mix. Let's hear it. When somebody clicks the follower button or somebody tunes into us on Twitch or Mixer, I get... I get a push from those services that are heard by the ASP.NET Core app around the world, and around the world, and all I do is a push to my little web page that updates using a little JavaScript client, and we get the cool numbers at the top of the screen. Oh my goodness, that's amazing! It's like it's like Rube Goldbergian. Mm -hmm. Like, I have not written in C sharp in a while. Like I've been written in, writing in Python. Yeah. Recently. Yeah. And so it does my heart good to see this goodness. I've had the same problem. Like I, I was t I was telling him that I looked at the Signal R code, and I mean, that's all I did for two years was present on Signal R. Yeah. And I looked at Signal R and I went, oh, I don't recognize. Is it different? It's changed. It's, totally different. it's not totally, totally different. Hang but on. We haven't actually gotten into some of the Signal R code yet. Okay. So let me finish this one shape that that uh, Brady was suggesting here. I need to actually grab, I'm doing some dependency injection. Mm -hmm. I need to get an appropriate service and pass it in to this thing here because Brady changed the signature of this. So let me just complete this little bit of code here. So as you're writing that, I someone said something about dependency injection that they just did not like it. They I didn't this. like it? It was Miguel de Icaza. Yeah. Wait a sec. At his AMA. Mm -hmm. He says it makes code more complex. And what say you? I, I didn't. No. I didn't. I disagree. You disagree? I disagree. 
Respectfully. I mean, I love of, it. Of course. I mean, of course. Come on. But I, I like it because I can, I mean, I understand that it's very difficult from a forensic, what is it with me in forensics? Forensics, it's, yeah. It's difficult for me to forensically look at code and go, oh, wait, wait, wait. You mean this thing has like 47 constructors or 47 properties and they're all decorated with this thing? Like, how do they get set? Magic. You so, know, so it's like once you uh, you accept it. Okay, let's let's back up a minute. Um, Jazzy Noop on the chat room says C sharp is awesome. I switched my bot from initially working <coughs> in Node.js to C sharp because of of this here. Now, what exactly are you referring to? It's a mixer bot, um, and Federico Dynamite disagrees. Do you disagree with Miguel? If Miguel hates DI, then we are all obliged to follow. Okay, so let's clarify. If you don't know, Miguel Diacasa, he's the one of the founders of Xamarin. Mm -hmm. um, he's kind builds, of a big deal. He's a huge deal. Like he's I, a huge deal. the dude. He's a he's a short little guy. Wears glasses. Amazing, amazing sort, sort knowledge. It's a, a little bit shorter than me. Word, no, okay. He's vertically challenged compared to me. How's that? Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. He's um, but it's uh, he's got um, amazing insight into .NET, mm -hmm. C sharp, and all that stuff. And I can see where he's coming from with okay, dependency injection is kind of confusing. But as as somebody who practices and builds enterprise applications, I want to be able to maintain that code. So get all those other things out. I get it. It makes sense. But but you also want to you also want to allow that code. Uh, room to evolve sure and i think that diic gives you that capability because it's i mean take visual studio okay as, as, as an example everything in visual studio is injected like like there are service interfaces and implementations that every team have written over mm -hmm. the years of visual studio and a lot of times it's it's all about like i need a i need a service that does foo and you have to reach out to team bar and say hey what service does foo okay they tell you you go okay now I'm just going to add an add an instance of that to my constructor, mm. and it's just going to show up because in, within VS, there's all these. I guess it's MEF. There, there, there's yes. this wonderful basket of services, and you can just pass them around. You know? Cool. Or not pass them around, but ask for them. So right. the 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 objection I have to that is when I'm reading someone else's code. It's hard to figure out. Like, I remember the first time I learned Structure Map, which was like many years ago, eons and eons ago. I don't even know if it's maintained anymore. Mm -hmm. I was like, wow, this is magical. Mm -hmm. But because I knew where everything was. Yes. If someone else were to come and look at my code, they'd be like, what the heck kind of garbage coder is that? Yeah. But you may do that anyways, so, even if I don't do DI, but still. I, I think I think Brendan makes a good point here that um, people can misuse DI, right? Okay. With great code comes great responsibility. Sure. Right? Spider-Man taught us that. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Jazzy Noob asks, what tools are we working on? We're working we're working on the stream tools that build these widgets at the top of the screen. Mm -hmm. ASP.NET Core. I'm not going to go too much further into that. Mm -hmm. um, I inject my DI container with a DI container. <laughs> Dude. <laughs> nice. Very it's meta. So meta. I just think I have a problem when someone says it's magic because the first time I was taught recursion by a subpar professor, he said it was magic. And I'm like, this is not magic. It is what it is. So I, I think there's, I, you're right. Recursion is not magic. I, I, I know. Think there's... I, the guy was a terrible professor. <laughs> it was terrible. I, but, it, but I think there's a point where, you know, when you get started mm -hmm. and, you, and right, you don't need to learn beyond the abstraction, you know. Don't worry about it. It'll just arrive. That whatever you put in your constructor parameters, right? Like here, I, I'm receiving an iHub context here mm -hmm. on line 12. Sure. Right. Don't worry about where that's coming from. It'll, It'll be there for there. you. Right. But in, it, when we turn it around, then and we say, all right, now let's unit test, yeah. and we can pass in a fake one of those to test with. Then you start to see the purpose. Yeah. And then when you finish unwinding that, okay, now we register with the dependency injection container, and you get into that actual application architecture discussion yeah. yeah then the magic thing goes away and see the, the the thing that the thing that really freaked me out about it was uh when i first experienced uh the ioc i can't remember the name of the product i think it might have been community server oh. but i was like walking through the code trying to figure out like i do this and then it, wait a minute why are there 14 constructors on this class sure but i will say this like i don't mind it as much on and i know there's different schools of thought on this i can handle uh DIIOC with constructor logic way easier than I can with properties. Sure. Properties make me feel a little, I'm like, wait, you just set the values of our properties? That's a little. That, that, that's that is a little, yeah. sure. Um, 
uh, our friend Mr. Magoo in, in the Mixer chat room says, uh, magic is not magic, it's obfuscation. You're right. Um, that's, a, that's a good point. Um, but there is something to be said for single responsibility and trying to trying to move those other concerns somewhere else. I didn't mean to come in here and drop a grenade, you know? Dude, but at the same time, like, yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> I think this is a good discussion. Um, Janescu says tech can be magic. You're right. Um, DI is extremely useful. Autofax keyed registration is awesome from standby reloading. Fantastic. And um, Jazzy Noop in the Mixer chat room, thank you for, for that. Uh, I'll take that as a compliment, I guess. Um, I like C Sharp a little more than Node.js, and you're trying it because of the stream here. Thank you. We, you cool. know, I appreciate Love you it. trying it out and, and joining us here. Yeah. So tell your friends. Uh, you know, we want to get more followers. Hit that architecture workshop goal here. Mm -hmm. So um, have you ever done a stream on machine learning? I haven't. He what? Has, he has an idea. I have an I have an idea for that. But all right. So so let's let, let's go a little meta here. Um, and let's talk about things that we could do here on stream for a okay. second. Okay. So, are we, we going to finish? We got to finish. I feel like I we'll come back to this. And Chef Brent, oh my gosh, thank you for the cheer. I appreciate that. 100 bits Sweet. from Brent. Um, it, just a quick reminder. What does that mean? Did you like get a free coffee or something, or like uh, a coupon no, he to the supercuts? He, he's tipped us. Oh, and and the supercuts is awesome, man. When they wash your hair and stuff. That's fantastic. No, it's sports clips. That's the one. Clips. So, no, so um, when folks subscribe or they cheer, they, they submit bits. And, and if, if I was, you know, if I was doing this for a living, mm -hmm. I would collect that money and terrific. Um, but I'm not. I don't oh. want So what I'm doing is I'm actually going to match Brent's cheer there. I'm going to match the subscribers myself. I'm going to take that and, and actually our employer likes to oh. match some of our charitable donations. I'm going to take the whole thing, donate it to Send Girl. Send me the sports clips. Oh. That would be charitable. Oh, right. <laughs> no. I'm, I'm actually going to donate to Girl Develop It. Oh, yeah. yeah. Fantastic organization. Absolutely. Teaches women, underserved minorities, mm -hmm. how to write code, just like we're doing here. Awesome. So thank you, Brent, for, for cheering us along here. Um, Seth should do some machine learning stuff with Jeff. All right, so let's talk about that for a second. Okay, okay. So I'm building these, these widgets that we have here across the top of the screen to mm -hmm. interact with my services, the stream services, Mixer and Twitch. Mm -hmm. And all I'm doing right now is just I'm collecting numbers and I'm mm -hmm. showing them on the screen. What kinds of things could I interact with my stream services, do a little machine learning? I've, I've started with another one of my friends um, who, to, who's got me pointed to cognitive services yes. to look at doing moderation. So some of the folks in the, chit in the Twitch chat room know that I have a very overbearing Nightbot that hangs out there. It only hangs out in Twitch because that's all that service mm. is configured to. Okay. It doesn't run in Mixer. It would be great if I had a bot that run in both. Ran, run in? Ran, Ran in both. both. Is that something machine learning can help me with? So I think machine learning really is, so people tend to make machine learning into magic and it isn't. N no. That's why I have a magic. Well, for, for mere mortals it is. For Not really, like no. So when we write code, we get a problem, mm -hmm. right? And we're like, okay, I am going to figure out the series of steps that I need to solve the problem. Mm -hmm. And then we write the code, sure. right? And the thinking takes longer, writing the code takes like 10 minutes, right? For a sure. function, let's say tops. So machine learning is a little bit different, right? Because instead of, instead of coming up with a series of steps to solve a problem, to make this function, you are instead trying to give the computer examples mm -hmm. of what the right thing to do is, and it will come up with the function. Mm -hmm. See, it's that it's that whole the computer will come up with the function part that I think some developers, myself definitely, it's like you want to understand that a little bit better. And I've talked to you enough to know that that's suicide. Like you don't no, want to try. You know? <laughs> like like for, for ML folks like you, that's where you want to be. For folks like us, it's just, I want to use that thing. Well, here's the thing. What's great about Cog is that it'll just it makes it easier. The SDKs make it easier for you to just train. Right. Well, hang on. So I, I got to call out um, our friend Meat Popsicle in the Twitch chat room. Yes, Meat Popsicle. Um, it isn't magic, says the magician. Yeah, no. But, but so so when you when it comes up with a function, you have to actually give it try this type of function first. Okay. And then you train it. Okay. And then it either works or it doesn't. Okay. okay. So the thing that most people aren't telling you is that the majority of the work of data science is first doing janitorial work on your data. Right. Mm. and then guessing and checking a lot okay okay so you have a certain class of functions like let's just say you think a decision tree is going to work yeah you pick that it doesn't work then you try this other thing a linear model like a perceptron 
which is really easy to train. It doesn't okay. work. Mm -hmm. Then you try logistic regression. Right? You see what I'm saying? And so it's not like it comes up with a function. You say, use this type mm -hmm. and see if the data can use that function to fit the data better. Okay. Right? Okay. And so it's not, it's not guessing. You have to tell it, use this type of model, try these type of parameters, and if it works, it does. And if it doesn't, then you try another one. So, okay. uh, so to, to, to try to pair it back to like what we've been talking about here is you tried one approach yes. using an event and an event handler and a thing, an event arts class. And we're going to try something different. And we're going to try something different. We're trying to make the code better. And okay. then, yeah, sort of a metaphor for what you're mm -hmm. saying. But you would do that around numbers and whatever that we're analyzing, whatever that data set is that mm -hmm. we're analyzing. Like I want to cool. parse a okay. string this way. That took too long. I want to parse a string this way. That took yeah. too long. I want to parse a string this way. Yeah. That didn't take quite as long. And the thing is, machine learning can only answer five types of questions, right? It's not like it can do anything. What are those five types of questions? So the first type of question is, which class does it belong to? Okay. How much or how many? Okay. Is it weird? Can I recommend something? And there's one more that's escaping me right now. Okay. So let's see. Uh, there's classification, regression, anomaly detection, recommendation. Oh, and then and then is, is there are there groups? Okay. Mm -hmm. Other groups. So there's only only five. And so what happens is the reason why it looks smart is because people take those five and they compose them together. Right. And then it looks really smart. So if you think of like a self-driving car, you're breaking it down into a series of yes, no questions. Should I turn left? Yes. Okay. Should I turn right? No. You know, and whichever probability comes out the most, that's what you do. And so when you compose them all together, Should I break? It's, yes. it looks really smart. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So I feel like I'm like throwing but, out all the but like, like but like the by the time you're behind the wheel of a self-driving car that car has been trained a lot been trained a lot yes to not kill you yeah and so okay. there's data there's and, and then there's safety right so the machine learning algorithm informs the other algorithm it's not like it's doing it all on its own so you write some code around specific regulations mm -hmm. and your machine learning will inform those regulations as well. Okay, so so let's let's take that and, and go a little bit towards what I'm you know what I'm looking for. I want to I want to have a better moderation bot. Is mm -hmm. that something where we can train it? Right. When I look at some of the bots that are out there, they're literally a regex. They're looking for you know cuss words, right? Sure. Oh, let's throw them out, right? Because I want to make sure family friendly stream, folks are able to watch with their kids or whatever. So right, that's the. That's the simple yeah. thing, mm -hmm. right? But then we can start extrapolating from that and look at different things that people might ask yeah. and mm -hmm. interact. Mm -hmm. it, right? Is that is that something where you could train it to be able to answer different questions and maybe respond? Yes. So if you okay. can formulate that into a Testable does it belong analysis. to a class? Does it? Do you want, do you want a number to be returned? Do you want a group? If you can put it formulate to the five questions, then yes, yeah, yeah. I'll give you an example because that's kind of abstract. Example, someone just submitted a sentence. Yeah. Is it happy or sad? You see that? How that's a, that's a yes, no question. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. that's called sentiment analysis. Okay. In cognitive services, we already wrote functions that will do that for you. Okay. Right? Or for example, for example, uh, another one. Uh, is this person, uh, is this uh, another one? It, it, are what they're saying vulgar or not appropriate or inappropriate? Yes. So notice that once you, once you formulate the question like that, then machine learning can do a lot. Okay. But if you do not formulate in that kind of in those five categories, then you can't answer the question. So people come to me like, "Hey, you know, I want to predict the stock market price. Is that something machine learning can do?" Well, it turns out that you can do it with regression, but you need a certain amount of data. Okay. Right, and and, and you can't have all the data. For example, let's just say you're in commodities trading and you're trading on the future of orange pr orange prices, and you're frozen concentrated. For, yeah, yeah. yeah. For, this, Love that movie, by the way. <laughs> so, notice the Philly yeah. reference, right? Can you, can you trading guess places. the film reference? I'm just saying. It's trading places. So, so let's just say let's just say that your model works really well, and then all of a sudden it does really bad. Okay. And it's because you forgot to add the data point of weather. Mm, right? Okay. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's where it's like the more data you have, the better. The more you can predict, and Got so. It. So that's why the answer is yes, you can, but do you have the appropriate amount of data and do you have enough of it? And see, a, a friend of mine actually wrote like a, an IoT thing, a, a, a guy in Charlotte, um, and he actually did exactly that. But it, I don't know if I would call it ML. I mean, he had a, he had a, a, a lawn watering system built, built with Arduino. Uh -huh. And this uh, lawn watering system, would, it wouldn't just run on a timer. It would, it would, he started running on a timer and then he came home one day and it was raining and the sprinkler system was on. He was like, that makes no sense. So then he added that variable. Yeah. That's what I think about. It. Yeah. And but that's but that's more like a human 
writing is what we're doing here. We're changing the code and changing the system to accommodate, whereas with ML, it's changing how it processes the data or how it decides what to do with the data yeah. based on egregious amounts of data. Right, so machine learning would, would do in that sense is it would predict whether or not it had to do watering tomorrow. Got it. Right, okay. and then you can okay. adjust prices based upon like, for right. example, like how much is my water bill gonna be? So okay. machine learning isn't like, like we have a series, like for example, if it's if it's over eighty degrees and it's not and it's and it's not cloudy, I should water. Right? Not, no, notice that that's not machine learning. That's like logical. we've come up with a series of steps. Yeah. Instead, you give it a lot of examples. Okay. And then if you give it a lot of examples of like the weather that it's been like for the last ten months or twelve months, and you found a way to organize it in a way that allow you to predict. Yeah. I guess so, the, I guess the on, part that I'm wondered look, about is like the the projection. It's like how does it know? Like based on this, like you you want that ML to basically make a decision. How does it know whether it's made the right decision or the wrong? Decision? I would I would I not to be pedantic, but I would change it to you want it to inform a decision because we should we should always be careful when building machine learning to not like here's an example and there was a question. Oh sorry. So um, yeah, we have a question here from Kara Dog. Um, so let's take a real example here. I'm in a hospital in the in the decon unit. I pass theater trays. Uh, containing various items, scalpel, hammer, bone saw, you get the picture. Let's say there's a camera that scans the trays, counts the items, checks uh, their shapes and says, hey, there's a piece missing here. I think it's this one. Can you get to that level of detail? I think we may have yes. demoed something like that at Bill. Yes. Yeah. So, so for example, the way I would break it down is I, you would have a group of things that you, a set of finite things that you know have to exist on the table. Okay. And then what you would do is you would build a model that detects whether or not a picture is one of those or not. Mm. And then you're like, hey, but I have a whole picture with a lot of them in there. And so you, you scan with boxes like over the thing until it finds, oh, found this, that's there. Oh, found this, okay. yeah, that's there. And then once you have that, once you've learned to do that, then you can automatically say, well, of the set of things that we predicted, there's a 90% chance that the scalpel's there, that the yeah. other thing's there but there's a 0% chance that the other things are, then you'd be like, hey, we're missing this thing. Yeah. And so notice that I took this complicated thing you turned it into and I turned, it, I turned it into a for loop, number one, yeah. and I turned it into a for loop over yes, no questions. Yes. Oh. Right, and so that's the machine that can answer yes, yeah. no okay. questions, okay. or a number okay. of questions, time, or anomaly, sense. or recommendation, or yes. grouping. Okay, okay. Um, Seth, why do you think the price of pork bellies is going to keep going down? Good question. It's the weather. Way to go there, Valentine. I'll bet you are typical bet. <laughs> <laughs> that movie is so good, man. So good. I don't, it's just. Quality. Actually. Like, it just like, it, like the nuance, you know, the societal yeah. kind of oh, yeah. uh, uh, commentary. Yeah. It's just oh, so gosh. well done. Yes. So I, just, I, 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 I love I, it when they lift Eddie up off the <laughs> legs. I, I've been by the Duke's house. Oh, really? Out, right? It's like, I've seen that before. <laughs> That's cool. And then they, they made an appearance, the two old guys, in Coming to America. Yes. Remember? Yes. And they're like, oh, they're right? Yeah. Mm. And, they're, and they're all poor because yeah. at yes. the end of trading places. Of course. Um, Jesse Noop, I've written a bot sort of for Mixer here. Yes. Uh, Joe Bun. So our friend Joe Bun has put together, Joe Bun's in Denmark, and he submitted a pull request to us. Let me run over. Let's just show this real quick. We have a pull request. And we, I haven't integrated it yet. But this is prep for a bot to connect out to Mixer and be able to start working on um, doing some of the uh, interaction we want to work on with Mixer. So um, I can send messages, I can send whispers to specific folks, timeout folks if we need to, ban users if we need to, logger information. Put it, gosh, Joe Bun, you've put in a ton of work here. Holy this is cow, man. Really. Really impressive stuff here. Wow. Um, and I, I absolutely want to spend time on this, and I want to make sure I give it the appropriate time it needs. Um, but this is just the beginning of being able to do some of that. You know, we have a way now to listen and get information from Mixer, but then I've got to start dialing in some of what you're saying mm -hmm. to do those mm -hmm. tests, to inspect some of the questions. Because I'd, I'd, like, I'd like our viewers, the folks participating with us, to be able to ask questions. Sure. I see the question a lot. Hey, what are you working on? Hey, what's this editor you're using? And I need to explain, well, this is Visual Studio and blah, blah. 
And see, Lewis is a kind of service that will be able to look L at those wait, kind of Lewis, questions. How's Lewis spelled? L O U L U I S. Okay. Language Understanding and Intelligence Service. Okay, it's not some guy named Lewis. No, it's not some dude is. that we have, Lewis, you know, that's just sitting in the server room. <laughs> just over there. Sorry, over there. There you go. There you go. Yeah, uh, no, it's Language Understanding and Intelligence Service, and it okay. breaks down the whole language thing into a series of yes-no questions. For example, it pulls out entities and intents. You okay. define the entities and the intents, what people want to do. So, for example, if someone says, hey, I'd love to subscribe to your channel, mm -hmm. notice that the entity is channel and the intent is subscribe. And so it pulls those out. And notice that that's a machine learning question of the sense of, does, is this entity in here or not? Or is this intent in here or not? And then it groups them together and then it's able to get the data out. And so, for example, if someone were to ask, hey, what kind of editor are you using? You'd be able to use Lewis to pick out the entity editor and then the intent use, right? Okay. And then you'd be able to respond to that. So, so, so I'll go ahead and I'll go ahead and set it up. So uh, when Seth's going to be on the show to actually show us how to do this? We got to work that out. I know, right? I know. You got to make something happen. I got your subscription on the way. We will make that happen. All right. Um, I think we're, we're almost out of time here. We're at 9 o'clock. This will be my normal end time. Okay. So thank you so much for helping me out a little bit with SignalR. I'll finish doing a little bit of writing on that code, get that lined up so we're simplifying our interaction. I'll get rid of that event and mm -hmm. our extra stream service out there. Um, if you want, I can send you a PR too. Sorry, guys. Oh, that'd be great. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. yeah then we I'll can test it out and make sure it works. I can't test the Mixer and Twitch services, but I can. Sweet, sweet. Right. So if Drupal's telling me, yes, well, look at this. His PR, he says, is up to 3,700 lines. No way. Oh my dude, gosh, and you've got dude. some documentation here. Jeez. 48 files change. What all are you changing, dude? Oh, wait a second. Look at this. He's changing my editor config, my solution file. Dude, you've gone Man. above and beyond here. This he's, is he's real. Look at that, 3,700 lines. Where is he at? Uh, he's in uh, Denmark, right, Jovan? Is that where you're at? I, I think that's kind of sacrilegious, man. He's messing with you. Uh, I'm settings. not close. I'm going to, uh, I have a yeah. r really aggressive travel schedule, and I'm, but I'm, the closest I'm getting to is Oslo. But he can do this worldwide. Worldwide, dude. No, I mean, I, I'd like to oh, meet this guy. I'd like to and visit. Give him like a handshake or a hug, high five hug, whatever he needs, because that's amazing. You that's, know? Awesome. that's a big deal. That, uh, right? Shoot. That's phenomenal stuff. Well. Thank you so much for joining me. Thanks for stopping by. Sorry for dropping you. the bombs in here. <laughs> Sorry, man. No, no, that's that was great. Oh, I'm talking about good. what I said. I'm talking about the smell. That's good. That was him. Dude. All right. So much um, family friendly. Bye -bye. Yeah, right? So um, <laughs> the archive will go out on YouTube a little bit later today. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. And I'll see you guys on Thursday. I'm going to be live streaming from MVP Summit at the Hackathon. And we're going to have some folks stop by and show us some of the things they're working on. Cool. Catch you later. Take care. Thanks so much.